All right, ladies and gentlemen of Azeroth, welcome back to the channel. I've never been so hyped for a GMA, but also been so terrified at the same time of a GMA of making sure we get off to a decent start here in terms of sound and everything. Guys, thank you so much for being here. This is just truly an, an unbelievable, uh, you know, moment for, for all of us here, man. We have Kevin Jordan, one of the original three game designers of World of Warcraft, the uh, best game of all time, S tier in its own tax bracket game of all time. He designed nearly all the spells for all the classes in World of Warcraft. And I just, I don't even really know what to say, guys, but uh, we're back with GMA52. Thank you so much for being here, Kevin. Um, let's just do My a quick, <laughs> quick, quick catch up and just everybody wave, everybody slash wave at Kevin, guys. Like, uh, there, there he is right there. <laughs> what up, guys? <laughs> It's real. <laughs> oh man, I, I Gargos is on cloud nine right now. Yeah, I know. I, 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 <laughs> it's on mine. <laughs> Chat. Let me start off by. Okay, go, go for it. Go for it. There we go. All right, let me start off by saying first of all, Kevin, thank you so much for everything for for being here for what you did to this game, guys. I am, I am, I am, I am absolutely like, uh, yeah, I, I, I lost for words, which was you know first time for for everything. But I mean, the fact that we're we're here, you know talking about this game on, on episode 52 about a game that we all love and care about and we have kevin jordan here to talk about it it's just what a, what a beautiful thing thank you kevin for coming out thank you dude Dave, for setting this up you guys yeah, go ahead I'm just, I'm just so happy right now wait i, I thought there was an intro to this oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah you ready <laughs> are you ready let's do it let's do it here we go boys okay so kevin let me uh uh did you help you help created uh power uh, uh fort right no no what's the intro with this channel what Let's hear some good morning, Azeroth. Okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a power word forward in everyone. Here we go. Here oh, we okay. go. Good morning, Azeroth number fifty two, baby. Kevin Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Love to see it. Love to see it. <laughs> very All nice. Right. Very nice. I mean, I almost don't even want to do. I don't even care what happened with Def Camper doing Darren Meldron. We usually do a little like you know catch up with everybody and yeah, how they've right? been doing. I kind of like don't care <laughs> yeah. about you guys. Like, I mean, can you give us a little one liner, Meldron? Man, yeah, it looks like you, you're bald. I'm bald. We both shaved their heads. Yeah, shaved their heads for this. You uh, know what I mean? I forgot. Um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, everything's great. Uh, what's been new? Been tanking on a warrior. Uh, doing some twenty man tanking. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have some questions about warriors coming up at some point. But I've been really enjoying that. Other than that, just been playing, raiding. AQ40 is amazing. We're having a good time. Hmm. Yeah, same Very here. Nice. It's not being important, really. Uh, we clear AQ now in one night. It's not not it actually just skip this and let's let's get to the point. <laughs> That's what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. Right? <laughs> we're, we're, before we begin, though, can we get some absolute berserk chat spam for Dunedin by for some reason hooking the side, like putting this together, like reaching? <laughs> I don't I don't know how this happened, but like. <laughs> Yo, do the day, though. Neither do I, man. <laughs> it just, you want me to tell you how it happened? It, he just asked. Yeah. Was, <laughs> there you go. Damn. Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, you know, the worst anything can happen in life is that, you know, it turns out the way you didn't want it to happen. Well, you know That's what right. I mean? But how dare a you? The <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Misty. All right. Can I get a word in that choice here? I got something for chat. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Good morning, Stranglethor Vietnam! <laughs> That's my new sub emo noise or whatever. That's it. <laughs> there it is. Just oh, have Kevin scream that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, I, it's almost the type of thing that I think each in each one of us has like an initial, you know, if you could, you know, humor us, Kevin, just like a little paragraph of what we'd want to say to somebody who created, you know, the best game of all time, a game that's been so... Um, so General. impactful and integral to you know just who we are as humans you know and i have to take it too far but i mean I, there's that's that's a true statement you know i, I don't even yeah. want to know how much slash played i have overall you know in, in wow in general but before we get into that do you have any initial um you know words for for anybody or like how are you <laughs> yeah how you guys doing um you know i hear that a lot and i i honestly i never get tired of it i was saying you know in our kind of warm-up for the show but uh this game has affected me a ton as well like i know i know the depth the connection a lot of you guys have because you know i've I worked on this game and played it for a huge portion of my life and um when i wasn't you know thinking about it and work or when i wasn't working on it and playing it i was definitely thinking about it so it was yeah it was a life consumer for me as well and uh, it's it's uh, 
it fills me with joy to know there's so many people out there that have gotten so much joy out of it. Um, and yeah, so I never get tired of hearing the stories and I definitely understand, you know, like, um, I'm not, you know, I'm a game designer, sure, but I'm also just a huge nerd. You know, I'm a huge gamer nerd, right? So um, I go through all the same things you guys go through when you find a game that you just love and really connect with. So, um, yeah, I love to hear it. love to share in that, you know, geekdom. I'm glad. Sometimes I feel like, like, you know, all that, you know, maybe maybe they don't want to hear because they, you know, they've heard it so many times, but like... I, I know I can share this with everyone else because everyone knows my story a little bit, but you know, wow literally helped save my life. Like I, you know, I had a, issues with addiction in my past and all that. And like, wow was always there for me when I would, you know, get out of rehab, whatever, get clean, come back, play mm-hmm. wow. And like, you know, wow helped me grow as a person. Mm-hmm. I, I never thought I would be the kind of person that'd be able to stream. Never thought I'd be the person that'd be able to talk like all, on in front of people like this. And the socialization that wow taught me coming out of my shell, coming out of my mm-hmm. shell and, and being able to explore who I am and like what I like about myself, this game allowed me to do that. And, right, right. And it's, it's amazing. so much yeah. more to me than just a game. So I can't thank you enough, Kevin. You, get, you hear that, kids? If you're going to get addicted to anything, World of get Warcraft. Addicted. Yeah, <laughs> that's the same yes. thing. Yes. <laughs> so I, I hear you mentioned you're like a huge game fan yourself and like huge mm-hmm. artist we are. Uh, I think that's without bashing too much on, on Blizzard nowadays, but I think that's what made classic that's a secret to vanilla wow right uh, mm-hmm. it's designed by people who just love playing the games as, yes as we do and i wonder as a first question maybe how do you feel about uh, how classic is uh, how, how they went with classic did they make the right choices in your opinion like going with the 1.12 patch and stuff like that mm-hmm. um overall i would have to say it, i think it's a huge success right like yes there are issues yes not everything is as all of us would have wanted. Um, but you know, it's, it's like, it's like any good relationship, right? Like you, you tolerate the stuff that annoys the crap out of you because there's still 95 to 98% of it. That's just like a dream come true. Right. Mm So yeah, those little things annoy you and they get on your nerves. And when you're in a bad mood, it seems like it's even worse than it is. But, um, at the end of the day, we're, we're back playing a game we fell in love with. And, um, you know, we'd, we'd still be, you know, a lot of us would still be on private servers if this thing weren't around, right? So yeah. no bash on private servers. They're amazing at times. But, uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of us just wanted as close to the real thing as we could get, and we got it. And um, it's not perfect, but it's still, uh, yeah, it's still taking up our time, and we're happy to be here playing it. So Yeah, no game is perfect. And I think, you know, when you consider the fact that we had 15 years to sandbox this thing uh, in different ways and, and try to understand it at may, many deeper levels. There's, it's kind of no surprise that, you know, metas exist, right? And and I think you, we were talking about that a little bit before the call, but that's part of the process, right? And that's something that you kind of envisioned when you made this game is that uh-huh. metas, metas would develop. Oh, yeah, for sure. That is the process. Um, yeah, I talk a lot about this, a lot about this on my channel when it comes to rotations. Um, uh, talk about like, um, you know, DPS rotations or whatever it is. I think a lot of modern development designs those intentionally. And rather than what, what, how I approached it back in the day, which is just to give you a bunch of cool abilities. And then you, you define the rotation based on your expertise in the game. Right. So the difference between the way I did it and the way a lot of uh, games do it nowadays is they've removed that process. Right. Because they've de- they've designed for you the way the buttons should be pushed, and once you figure that out, then you just kind of do what they intended, right? But they've taken that whole process of fun of, you know, every once in a while you get to you know outsmart them and play in a better way than they were expecting, but it's a lot more rare, um, and that process is so huge when it comes to engaging with the game, right? Because um, you know your creativity, your personality, your expertise, you know your math skills, what, whatever it takes, right? All the things that go into defining the meta is such a huge part of um, gaming for so many. Mm. Yeah. And I think what's what's interesting is how the meta has evolved over time, how the meta has, you know, this game, you know, is like we all say, it's a 15, 16-year-old game, but still there's something found new almost every day. 
in terms of mm -hmm. whether, you know, oh, is this item going to be best? Is this, you know, uh, as a priest, I'm looking at like, okay, you know, for certain fights, I like using my tier two APs bonus and getting the, the trinket from uh, ZG and like all these different things where, you know, you formulate for, for this boss, this is going to be the bit, the best for this boss. And right. people are asking in chat, like this game, 15 years old, still ten stands the test of time. Um, people rather play this game than retail. Wow. Because of, the, the feeling of just immersion and the feeling of, mm -hmm. you know, getting something out of the game that I can't get out of retail for me personally, even though, yes, there's challenging being a healer, this, that, and the other, but the amount of, um, you know, just pure passion that was put in this just shows it bleeds out when you look yeah. at the class design and when you look at the, um, the, the, the game at a whole. And I think for me, I get a huge kick out of um, the, the little things like, right, like for, for example, you know, like priests having uh, certain different abilities for each each uh, race and things like that. And I think, and you look at like a game like say D and D, and you feel the elements that are out of D and D into into classic WoW. You really, I don't, I don't feel that as much with retail. I feel that so much more with classic. And I think that is what makes a difference to me, is I can mm -hmm. feel myself playing this game forever. You know, right, right. Stop! I'm blushing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing that I think you guys hit the nail on the head. Uh, what Def Camp just said. I think class identity is so well defined in Classic versus any other iteration of the game. Um, like, do you guys agree? Like, every class feels so unique. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah. Go ahead, Carter. Well, I was going to say, man. Like, it's the type of thing. My 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 brain. Like, there's so many things racing through my heads right now, man. Like, just to give you my one little paragraph, you know, I played this game since the winter, like winter break. I was in middle school, 2004, and uh, ever since there, it was, you know, it's really the only game that had that instant connection. Like, maybe there was one or two other games that come to mind, like maybe Halo or something like that. But it just, it was a game that felt too good. I remember. Uh, I went over to a friend's house, family friend's house, and uh, they're, 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 you know how you do these play dates when you're kids, and the parents get together and drink wine and stuff. But like you're, you know, you're you're you you're like <laughs> yeah. you're hanging out with a much older. He doesn't really like you. He doesn't really like you. He's just tolerating you. I'm there looking over his shoulder, watching him in the barrens on his troll, and like I just knew in that moment, like dude, this game is too good. It's too good. It's like overpowered. <laughs> I had to go get the game and turn all my friends to it. And I've just never seen a game that's it's still teaching us stuff. There's still stuff I learn. You know, I learned about the Ventrico supplies from fishing the other day. Um, you know, so many years later, and even when you get all these big brains and the internet and all these tools, it's almost like kind of assaulting the game. I don't mean that in a bad way, but I just mean there's mm -hmm. so much technology that we can apply it towards the game to try to break it, but it doesn't break. It doesn't break, really. It still stands its own. Even with all of this insane mm -hmm. spreadsheets and theory crafting, somehow this game that was made 15 years ago plus doesn't break. It doesn't just totally crumble under the weight of all that technology. Um, and all right, Cargos, I, I, I have to call you out here. I'm sorry. Um, it, you didn't watch him running in the Barrens and decide that it was the best game ever. You looked down in the corner of his screen and you saw Barrens chat, and that's when you decided <laughs> this is the best game ever. Yep. So yeah. I felt like you pretty disingenuous for you to leave out that very. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. You're right. That was that was the perfect medium to channel my edgy little 14 year old self. Yeah, that's uh, right. You know, throwing in those Chuck Norris jokes and all that. But I, mean, I think the exact line was, "Where's Man Crick's wife at my house?" <laughs> <laughs> just to build on what you said, though, Melderon. Like, there's so many yeah. things because we played this game for so long, and there's these stretches where you're just leveling solo. First of all, this game has been like therapy a lot of the time to me you know just getting in the the zones i play with the ambience and the music cranked up like if i had to pick one aspect of value add this game does for me it's just kind of that therapeutic chill amazing you know feeling i get when i play it and to build off what you said malderon every class not only has a good class identity identity and fantasy and the skills feel um you know different and unique and flavorful but they have their own like color palettes associated with them the, all the architecture mm -hmm. of the races have their own color palettes their own noises their own and I just, I think to mm -hmm. myself, like, you know, over years and years of playing this game, how much of this was premeditated? How much of this was black voodoo magic that they were, you know, like, like <laughs> how, how much of this was just sheer, unbelievable, like, RNG into making this uh, world? And now, you know, we're, we have this opportunity to get right. some information on the, you know, it's just insane. It, it's so funny, actually, because it's so nice to hear because um, it, I talk about in a lot of my interviews and whatnot, I talk about thematics, right, of a class, you know, which thematics are huge when it comes to creating that class identity. Um, 
But I've had that word you weaponized against me, right? Thematics, right? Because they'll, they'll throw that in my face every time a class isn't as powerful as another class, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is what some all people care about, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so it's so nice to hear the other side of like appreciating the identity that goes into it and, and essentially the thematics that I always strived for to be just as important as, you know, the underlying numbers. But um, again, offering an experience that, is different. You know, there are nine classes. I wanted to offer nine different types of experiences. Um, I was totally okay with, um, you know, the idea that you hate some classes and you love other classes. And to me, that was a sign that things were going well, because Mm. that meant I, I made a a very diverse, you know, set of experiences. So, um, as long as, you know, the entire community didn't, um, hate one class, right. (laughs) Then I was onto something. And it was pretty evenly split, as you guys remember from the early days. You know, yeah, there were some low pops on some things, but um, yeah, there was a pretty wide open. um, Go ahead. I was saying, why can't games do that today? Why is it that everything has to be balanced? Everything has to be. And I know, and I know so many, you know, the reasons are people complain and this, that, and the other. But, you know, I, I, I myself, right? Like there's classes that I I love. I got to say, like every class has its own feature that is just so distinct. You know, Mm -hmm. Druid, look at Druids. Like, they might not be the best healers, but look how amazing they are in PvP. Look how amazing flag powers they are. You know, the only class that can battle res in class as well. The only, you know, Mm -hmm. I I, I could, I don't know what I would do without Innervate half the time, right? As a priest. So it's like, (laughs) you know, it's like all these things that are so unique to each class just screams class identity. It screams, Mm -hmm. you know, like when I play a priest and I, and I, you know, feel so much different than, than a shaman or a druid and, you know, and paladins are, you know, doing a day. And I know you can probably talk hours about paladins, but they're, they're so unique in their class design. And Oh, I have a couple of questions, but that's for later. Yeah. yeah. Paladin I just, is I, like one of the <laughs> most unique classes in any game. I would say. I think so too. The seal yeah. and judgment system. But let's, let's say that's for later. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying there's like, why, you know, why do you think it led to the such homogeniz- homogenization in the classes over time? Unfortunately, it's just uh, it's a designer trap that you can fall into. Um, it's also something you'll see, like you know, I talk a lot on my channel about how very good players, or you know, the sort of the pro level players, tend to make very poor game designers. Um, there are exceptions, of course, but when you take a pro gamer um, and try to turn him into a game designer, he he thinks very one dimensionally about winning and about achieving and things like that. And, and those are the qualities that make him a pro player and make him uh, very good at winning. Right. But game design is about more than, you know, you know, for most games, right. Especially a game like, wow, uh, it's about a lot more than just feeding that appetite for winning. And so um, you have to step outside that mindset, right. And think about, all the different kinds of players that are, you're trying to attract to the game and all the different approaches people have to getting joy out of the game. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, and some can make the transition, but some struggle with it. And within, within dev teams and communities, we tend, we tend to see a person who's really good at a game and they're usually very intelligent people and they're, they're, um, they're occasionally, very well-spoken, very organized thinkers and things like that, things that you would think would translate well into a job like game design, and we toss them in. Uh, But yeah, there's a lot more to it. So it's a trap that designers fall into, and it's also, you know, like we tend to hire the people that are going to most readily fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. The other side of it, the trap is just, you know, this is what players want. Players want, uh, they want you to cut away all the fat you know, of a class, right? They want you to cut away all the things that don't help them achieve whatever it is their goals are because they see it as useless or trash or whatever. But if you get into that mindset and you stay in it too long, you end up with this game that's extremely lean and, you know, let's say perfectly balanced, but there's no fun in that, right? There's no experimentation. There's no what ifs. There's no, you know, mad science within that experience. It's just... Yeah, I rule, you know, and that's exactly how they designed it. So um, here we are, right? And it's it ends up being a lot less um, uh, collaborative, right? Like good games are a collaboration between game designers and players to achieve this joyful state of playing this entertaining thing, right? So 
do you feel um, like um, wow. the, the We've lost automatic that. pipe and stuff um, is getting us more into the direction again of like the old game design? Because classic uh, is kind of successful, right? Yeah, yeah, that's certainly the hope. And I think it has sent a strong message. I think it was sending a strong message before it even came out, mm -hmm. just how excited everyone was for it. You know, I was pretty blown away uh, when I heard about this whole project um, moving forward and the struggles that so many of you endured just to get the green light on it, right? So mm -hmm. um, that's a very strong message. And to anyone in the industry that, you know, thinks that there isn't a market for this type of game, that there isn't a successful monetization method within this, you know, within this market is crazy because mm -hmm. I mean, just look at classic mm -hmm. and there's multiple millions of people that want to pay $15 a month mm -hmm. <laughs> to play a game like this. Right. And that adds up to a lot of money. So as long as you don't screw it up with microtransactions and, you know, nickel and diming and, you know, right. Absolutely. Pay to win and all that other nonsense. Right. Um, yeah. There's a market for it. And, and the, the message is, is loud and clear. So it's, hopefully it's just up to somebody to, to listen, take notice and, you know, take a risk. Right. Cause MMOs at the end of the day are a risky proposition. They take a lot of money, huge teams, got to have a lot of talent, got to do a lot of things. Right. But, uh, um, yeah, there. I think there's a market for it. I believe in that market. I'm a part of that market. So, yeah. And, and I think like when I when I think about the way classes were designed, I think about tabletop games, and I think to myself like, you know, if you're going to roll a shaman or a paladin, let's say, which is kind of like a cleric, you know, you know from Jump Street, you're not going to do as much damage as a fighter, right, mm -hmm. or a, or a thief or something. And I think that's, I think that's okay. And, I, and I'm and I'm and I'm kind of surprised why people don't kind of see that. Like, because I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, but I I would assume that you know a lot of your class design ideals came from tabletop games. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, yeah, it, it's so funny too that you you threw thief in there, right? Because thief was the worst damage. Thief is a non combat class in D and D, right? So yeah, it's like Pathfinder. So yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, but over time it got transformed into this DPS, this dual wielding from behind DPS class, right? But the thief was the guy who was, you know, doing all the adventuring when you guys were back in town repairing your armor and buying healing potions, right? Like you had two things right. you had to do. <laughs> and the thief was like, "Well, I'm sneaking into every second story window I can and <laughs> I'm, you know, talking to somebody and, you know, sneaking around and you know, lock picking, right? Like he was the guy that was do having all the fun, right? And then yeah. when combat games, it's like I do one sneak attack and then I'm done, you know, <laughs> one backstab and I'm done. So it's so funny that uh, computer games have transformed the, the idea of the thief into like this high DPS, you know, character when, uh, and, and it was some of the things we tried to put back into the game uh, in WoW from like uh, EverQuest, for example. Um, you know, we had ideas, you know, obviously stealth was a big deal. Um, and we tried to put in, um, we put in lock picking and, um, we, we had a dis an idea for disguise at one point, you know, we wanted him to do things like, you know, sort of non-combat ish, very roguelike, you know, old school thief, like, um, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately that's, you know, when players think about success in MMOs today, it's, it's less about role playing, unfortunately. And more about you know progression right mm -hmm. yeah right and that's and, that's yeah. totally fine progression is great but um yeah I, I, I want games to be more ambitious than that i want them to uh you know strive for you know not just a progression oriented experience but an rpg experience at the same time so and it's I a tough you blend the, you hit the nail on the head because when, when i asked that question you know you really opened my eyes to see you know at the end game you know, you have these these people who, you know, push the, the end game content. But like when I look at balancing and Melderon and I and Cargos, I think we all agree with this. You know, you look at these people who are trying to balance the game in a PvE perspective, right? But the way that I look at the game now is I try to look at the balancing, taking consideration the leveling process, which is a huge part of the game, PvP and PvE. And when mm -hmm. you take in all three of those aspects, aspects the game is actually, the classes are actually really balanced, right? Because you might have some classes that are amazing levelers, like hunters and druids. Mm -hmm. Druids might not be some of the best PvE content, right? When, when it comes to healing or tanking, but they excel highly at leveling. They excel highly at PvP, you know? And I think 
one thing where we forgot is like so many people just look at PVE and say, okay, every class should be doing the same amount of DPS. They should be doing the, you know, be the best tanks. Everyone should be healing on the same part, you know, but right. what it comes down to is the classes are so balanced. If you think about the game as a whole leveling PVP, PVE, what you want out of these classes, what you want of the characters. And I think that's where you guys really nailed it. And, and people mm -hmm. forget that they forget that a lot because you right. want, everyone wants to do, you know, the, the top amount of DPS. Everyone wants to do the top amount of healing, but that's not what it's about. It's about and the experience. The fourth aspect, real real quick, is, is utility. I think it's utility leveling, yeah. you yeah. know, damage. And that's the thing people forget, too, is utility as well. So, so right. I, I'm really... And they also... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, they, they also don't realize that what they're asking for is the end times, right? Like, if everything's perfectly balanced, then no choice matters, right? And people don't really want that. Um you, want, you don't really want to feel like you're just like everyone else, you know, when it comes right down to it. You're cookie cutter next to everyone else. You, you want moments to shine. You want moments to flex. And in order to have those, you have to have moments where you can't flex, where you have to mm -hmm. sort of take it on the chin and get carried a little bit. And But, uh, yeah, what helps, what helps get you through those times is that utility, those individual class mechanics that everyone's excited to have you along for. Um and also just the play style, you know, if, if you're having fun doing your thing and the way you feel about your class and the way you project to others about your class, which is in a lot of ways a projection of your personality, then you can get through some of those dark times and raids where you're not, you know, you're doing 2% less DPS or 5% less DPS, you know. So um, it's important. But, uh, yeah, people, you don't really want perfect balance. Perfect balance is, is a very boring state. Hmm. Absolutely. I was going to ask you, Kevin, I was, I'm just super curious to get your side of the story here. Like, you know, as being one of the chief architects and creators of the original universe and amazing game, what is your take on the narrative of World of Warcraft as it unfolded? Like, I don't know exactly how you feel about the current state of WoW versus where we are mm -hmm. now versus like how you see, like, did it go downhill? Did it go uphill at points? Just really curious, like just your high level thoughts on the story of World of Warcraft, the game as it stands. Um, yeah, so it, uh, there's no question it's gone, it's declined, right? Like, there's no question. Uh, this is shown in the subs and the way people react to it and the amount of trust people have. You can see it reflected in, in a lot of different ways. Um, and, you know, I, I was, th this whole classic thing is a really, it's a, it's a really mixed bag for me. I'm super excited that it's, it's back, and I'm super excited that people wanted to play it so much right like that's really heartwarming to me uh that people appreciated you know the game i worked on so much that they want to bring it back 15 years later and it can be successful again in the current environment that's very you know satisfying right but it's also it's also saddening right because it tells me that the game hasn't reached its potential right like I imagined a world where 15 years later, the game would continue to be growing and even more awesome and building on the foundations of what it was to continue growing and evolving. Right. And not just wow, but other games in the industry would also be doing this, right. There'd be other contenders pushing the envelope and trying to, you know, actually dethrone wow, you know, and it would be a competitive space. Right. But I think a lot of us can agree that the genre is, is, um, kind of lackluster at the moment, right? Like the fact that a, a classic WoW has to come back and take charge again, right? Yeah. Is telling that, you know, the, the, the competitive scene isn't really there, right? So that's also kind of sad. And, and I accept that, it, you know, once I left the company, it's, it's definitely not my game anymore. Uh, and they have every right that ever the people that are still there that are working on it to do what they want with it. But I'm still kind of sad that um, they didn't build on some of the philosophies and some of that's down to me because I didn't write this stuff down. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's okay that they took it a different direction and they experimented and tried to do some things, but I'm sad that it didn't work out the way a lot of us would have hoped. Is there anything so. that jumps out to you? Uh, you? You mentioned these philosophies that they didn't build on. Was there anything mm -hmm. like that sticks out feature wise or maybe something they did during an expansion that sticks out as like a, uh, a sore point or something that you know was a was a you know a defining moment for the game. 
Yeah. Um, so one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things, and I think um, I think you guys will see this in hindsight and probably already know it, but I have to ask you guys um, and just go around r- real quick and tell me what is your favorite content in the game? What's the not not your favorite? Sorry. What's the best content in the game? Def Camp. What's the best content in the game? For me, it's in classic. It, like, in like classic, a, yeah, vanilla. Yeah. For me, it's playing with other people, whether it's dungeon uh, raiding, uh, the social, anything that involves social, uh, okay. social interaction. So, right. you know, dungeon, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, Cargos, what's the best content in the game? For me, um, you know, and it took me a while to. I was, I was embarrassed to say this for for a while, and it, it took me a while, you know, being a leveling Andy or whatever. But I, I, I really enjoy the leveling in this game. The carrot on a stick that okay. comes from that beautiful purple stuff that you accumulate with each kill and each right. quest. Uh, being able to right. immerse yourself in the zones and level different classes and mess with the talents while leveling. It is the leveling final answer. Okay, awesome. Do it, If I have to pick one thing, it's probably. Just being in beautiful zones, listening to the music, and hanging around in those zones, uh, which is why I l- like playing Alliance in the first place because I think nice. their zones are better designed. Yeah. Right, right, okay. Meldron, as a GM, I I have to say that I have I have this like inner like kind of need to see my raid progress and do better. I really enjoy okay. the raiding content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are all great answers, but you're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to tell you. All right, so he- here's the answer as I see it. You guys, you guys are the greatest content, right? The people playing the game are the greatest content. All the other stuff is just there to trick you to show up and start acting like yourselves, being fools, being funny, being hardcore achievers, you know, and bouncing off each other, right? Um, that's the greatest content, right? And so I think that's the thing that... Um, the, the modern dev team has forgotten, right? Because they're not, they, they've, they've, um, they've zeroed in on the content itself rather than remembering that it's everybody showing up, being in the same space, being each other, forming communities, socializing, right? So you were close, Def Camp. <laughs> yeah, I was um, close. <laughs> but uh, it, it's really just like you running around being yourselves, interacting with each other. And you know, creating the Leroy Jenkins, the more dots, so right? The yeah. the you know the funeral PvP event, right? <laughs> like, yes, yes. right? Like th- these are the things that matter. These are the things that that create stories that we remember, you know, forever, right? So many of us have killed bosses. So many of us have, you know, progressed through the raid tiers and at lightning speed or you know slow but steady or whatever it is but that's not the thing that we remember as a as a community for this game right um the things we remember are all of those amazing moments that stand out that are just legendary memories right so and all of that comes from you guys right none of that is scripted all right the leroy one was a little scripted but scripted Uh by people (laughs) um so you know what i'm saying like so that's, I think, one of the key things that has been lost today is that uh, there's not enough emphasis on creating a platform or an environment for those things to happen sort of naturally, right? Put people together, have them collide, have them compete um, in the same space over the same resources, right? So when you talk about things like um, personal loot, right, that's a, that's a thing players want so they don't have to compete, but we've lost all of those moments where somebody ninja looted in a raid, right? Which were just are some of the most legendary memories, right? Yeah. Those are gone now. Right. So again, trying to make the game better, but destroying the kind of true purpose of the game in the first place and the genre in the first place, which is to, you know, put people together so that they could create these moments. Right. Um, Things like dungeon finder, you know, like, those things eliminate that consistent social collision with the same people, right? That now we're forming relationships, some of them good, some of them bad, right? But all memorable, potentially. Um, things like flying mounts, you know, your the collision has been, you know, destroyed because everyone's flying past each other in a 3D space, right? You're not running along the ground, interacting with monsters and helping each other or competing with each other for nodes or, you know, any of those things, right? So... Uh, those are all the things that are really kind of key to what makes an MMO and the, and the genre itself really unique and special from other games. 
and it all comes down to the way you guys run around and behave with each other. So uh, has very little to do with the content itself. So and that's what's been forgotten over the years. It's the biggest big true I have ever heard. It's mm. like, and it's so simple, <laughs> yeah. and it's like we know it because we look back, and I look like just like you said, the loot things, like being able to like be the loot, uh, you know, like like being the the loot council and saying, okay, you know, rewarding this guy for what he did because he shows up every week to raid, he brings all these consumables, he brings all this money, and like he remembers that, right? It's that memory that you create rewarding people for what they're doing, having those choices in the game. And I always was such an advocate for this. It's like, leave the choices in the player's hands. When you take the choices yeah. out of our hands, you take the fun out of the game. And it's right. it's such a fundamental truth. And that's why we never formalized, like, what's the best way to divvy loot? We never did a, a formal version of, you know, DKP, or we never did a formal version of Loot Council or anything like that. We never formalized it, because I always felt... This is a social decision. Let the players work it out. Watch them struggle to work it out. You know, watch them screw each other over at times. But those are all important moments. Mm, that's um, so big to that's, me. That's where we learn, and that's where we grow, and that's what we remember, right? So, so, so back in back in the boardroom, I don't know if you remember back. You know what the exact technological limitations were back then, but where those were discussions you guys are very much having. Like, yo, we could put in an LFG, we could yes. put in a dungeon finder, we could put in um, some sort of personal loot system. You had the ability to do that, but you kind of socially engineered it so that, like, on pur- right. on purpose uh, is what yep. is what you're saying. That was all very much yeah. premeditated. A lot of times, yeah. And I had lost a lot of my influence by the time, um, you know, some of those systems were being put in. But I remember distinctly arguing against flying mounts and arguing against Dungeon mm-hmm. Finder. And I was wow. a crazy person on the team. Like, no one actually... Because arguing against the technology of Dungeon mm-hmm. Finder is uh, near impossible. Because when you think about... And if you guys remember back, and I can imagine that a lot of you believed it was going to be the greatest thing, right? Like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of you were super excited. Oh, sure, it was, it was pretty awesome for, for the year. first month, right? <laughs> yeah, and then you know, five years later, you don't realize how it's completely eroded the social dynamic of the game, right? But um, yeah, I was seen as a total crazy person, and the technology was so powerful. Oh my gosh, cross server dungeon finder, like mm. turning you know fifty cues into one, like it was just like oh, so great, right? And everyone on the team was so excited about it. And I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> but yeah, it was interesting was- for us. Uh, so when LFG came out, I was in Wrath, and I remember distinctly, we had we started our first guild, Death Camp and I, and the our main way of recruiting was actually doing heroic dungeons in, in mm-hmm. Wrath with people. And right. when LFG came out, we, we weren't able to do that anymore. Right. So but you're right. We were super excited about it when it first came out, but we actually immediately noticed... One of the downsides mm-hmm. of it was that yeah. there was no in, intra-server communication with those right. players anymore. Yeah. And the other thing it did was it yeah, it took away your ability to evaluate people in a natural setting, right? So yeah. you had to start leaning on other things like what's your gear score? What's your Raider IO, right? And that was it. It was just like, well, you got a high so gear cool. score, you're in. No, it turns out you're a total dick and don't fit in with our group at all. <laughs> right? like, you got to find that out later, you know, <laughs> or yeah. you actually suck at your class, but you've been carried through a lot of these raids or, you know, whatever it is. Right. So, um, it, yeah, it's that slippery yeah. slope we've all talked about. You know, it's like one thing after another, after another leads to another. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's so great. It's like all those things we talked about this in 51 episodes before it is. And now, one of the mm-hmm. actual original designers is just saying exactly what what we I suppose yeah. all been thinking yeah. all this time and why why yeah. did they change those things? Um, but I I've been watching like the interviews with uh, with Ian uh, mm-hmm. about Shadowlands and stuff, and I, I noticed mm-hmm. you had um, some videos about it as well. So right, I think he's going slightly into the right direction. I do too. Right. Like some of the things he's said in the last six months have. You know, like, I, I'm as shocked as anyone to find myself, like, agreeing with Ian. Because <laughs> um, traditionally and historically, we ha- couldn't be further from each other and from a design philosophy standpoint. But um, some of the things he's saying now have me really intrigued, you know. And you can see some of the things he's pushing, right, are being fought tooth and nail by the community, right? Yes. So his... You know, and he's partly responsible for the corner that he's painted into, but 
Um, I appreciate his attempts to try to find his way out of it. And I do want to see him succeed in some of those things. And sadly, I don't think we'll see it in Shadowlands. I think the big questions will be more further down the line, the next expansion after that, it, or the expansion after that, you know, like, because hmm. a lot of these things, it took a while to sort of change the game. So it's going to take a while to change it back. Hmm. Uh, if that's even their intent, you know, because there's a lot of retail players that are just like, no, let's just keep doing what we're doing. You know, we, mm -hmm. classic is for the other people that want their thing and we should leave retail the way it is and just have kind of two separate philosophies going at the same time. So, um, but uh, we'll see, you know, what, how, what their decision process is like going forward. But it has been refreshing to see yeah, Ian talking about some of this stuff um, in light of like what, you know, people have learned from classic. So, Thank you. It's nice. What you should also yeah. know is that we classic players, we would like to have like a new experience as well. Um, yeah, you want classic plus, right? So you, you feel <laughs> underserved because retail so. is still pumping out new stuff, yeah. but under the philosophy you don't like. And yeah. yeah, so what I don't think, unfortunately, what I don't think they have is the ability to run two MMOs at the same time. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, the classic players are still kind of. You know, we're happy that we have this thing. We want new stuff and we have to accept probably just TBC and Wrath, you know, for the foreseeable future. But uh, I'm happy with that. at that's, the end of the day, you know, fine. we have, yeah. we want, we actually just want, you know, something brand new. Exactly. Um, with the old philosophies. So, yeah. But a lot of this has to be due to the success of Classic, these positive changes. And I think that's evident, right, Kevin? I mean, that's a lot of these positive changes are, are just really showing that like you know okay it's you know let's try to get some of these classes to feel more like they they should you know and let's try to right. you know forget about the homogenization and do this right this. And, I, and i think you know i've always said like you know retail's kind of at a point where it, it would like you said it's going to take a long time to ever really make big waves and changes because i think that you know you we look back in the day and this is a question i wanted to ask you was you know when there's issues in game, I, I've always been a big advocate for this. So, like, there's something like, you know, um, someone, you know, ninja looted something. First thing people want to do nowadays is, like, you know, contact the GM, you know, get right. Blizzard involved. And my answer was, like, no, let the let the server, let the people in the server, like, you know, everyone on that server is going to know, hey, this guy's a dick. Don't run with this guy. You know, right. like, I love the idea of the server working and being its own uh, police force and, and obviously you know there are points when Blizzard has to step in when th mm -hmm. certain things happen but I feel like we're all so quick now to try and you know have oh yeah fix this Blizzard fix this Blizzard when yeah. Vanilla and something this is cargo Cargress has proved with the hardcore community that there's so much freedom within Vanilla you know we can create this hardcore community we can create mm -hmm. these things and it's so hard to do within retail and all these rigid you know you have to do it this way or this way or this way and all these things mm -hmm. were thrown at you it's just it's overwhelming yeah, it, it is funny too. I, obviously, I'm a huge designer, as you guys know, and that's in favor of um, you guys policing yourselves for the most part, yeah. um, letting the social systems work themselves out, right? Right. Uh, and that there's, but there's also, you know, there's also a customer service win in that same respect because you talk about now how if you have the tools and if you, if you're if you're shown that you it is up to you, it is your responsibility, then you you have to start doing this stuff yourself, you won't go to a GM, which will ultimately save Blizzard money, right? <laughs> because they don't have yeah. to hire as many CMs uh, or GMs. But um, in, a, in an environment where they want to have, they want to save that money, it's so interesting to me that the design has pushed it into a place where they have to have even more because the players are so used to, you know, <laughs> like yeah. getting on the phone as soon as something bad happens, right? Like <laughs> they're creating this expectation in the world with their design that we're never going to have a, a pain point. We're never going to have a moment of friction for you in the game, right? So if that ever happens, something's drastically wrong. Oh no, I, you know, I'm butthurt about something. Something's really wrong here, right? So, and then it's like, well, I have to call them. I have to call them and tell them, you know, something in their game design is flawed, you know, yeah. <laughs> where it's like, Back in the day, it was like, no, get used to getting butt hurt, right? <laughs> like, it's going to yeah. happen constantly. Get over it, you know? Yeah. Figure out a way to get past it, right? Um, and, you know, you, you eventually work, learn how to work through those elements, right? 
part of fun. Is there anything in in Classic looking back, you know, because it, it seemed like, you know, towards TBC and Wrath, you know, the game was blowing up, they got more people involved, so your leverage as one of the three original ones may, may have uh, dwindled or, or went down mm-hmm. a little bit, right? So, you know, it's not like you, you, your say just goes automatically. Is there anything within the Classic timeline that either bugs you, seems like a missed opportunity, something that, you know, you you wish if you could change one thing in classic looking back that you would have changed or and on that same note is there anything that you're just super proud of in the classic timeline that you think you guys just you know hit it out of the park uh i assume by classic you mean vanilla um oh yeah sorry yeah yeah just uh you know okay um so what am i super proud of yeah um the stuff i worked on individually was you know the talent system um and the talents themselves like uh that was a system that performed really well considering what its objectives were uh it did so much work at you know helping players um have a sense of individual identity within their class right so as a warrior i felt different than the warriors standing next to me um so the talents did a huge you know did a lot of work in that respect um and also giving you lots of fun decisions along the way as you were leveling up your class on you know getting you excited about um, just from a progression standpoint, did a, uh, did a great job. Um, and, and thirdly, helping you realize, um, your class fantasy, right? Cause like when you imagine, okay, I'm going to make a warrior. Well, there's tons of different iconic warrior templates within movies and books and everything else, right. That we all love from, you know, growing up or whatever it is. Um, but we hand you a warrior and he's pretty, he's pretty basic, right? but the talents help you finish that vision off of what you're trying to make. Right. So, um, and that, uh, that was huge in like helping everyone realize the more specific class fantasy. Am I the dual wielding warrior? Am I the two handed warrior? Am I the sword and board warrior? Am I looking for a Boromir style or a Conan style or, you know, uh, Aragorn style, whatever it was. I like the Um, Lord of the Rings here. (laughs) My guilty guilty (laughs) hand on the, on Lord of the Rings. It's called a fellowship. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, doing a day. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, so yeah, it's like uh, so it, it did a great job in that, um, and also it, it you know it was very gratifying to see like the rest of the industry talent systems became sort of industry standard, um, and even for games that weren't MMOs, you know, you started to see them pop up in shooters and um, you know, of course, strategy games. But it just seemed like every game that was coming out had a talent system of some kind. So um, that felt pretty good that this system had served wow so well that people were fascinated with it and wanted to work it into other games even games where the the talent system didn't really fit (laughs) because it didn't have the same needs (laughs) but people were still jamming talent systems in because they liked them so much so that was very gratifying um from a project standpoint like it has to be the horde alliance um faction split like that wasn't going to be a thing uh in wow um but I convinced Alan Adham, who was the lead designer and one of the founders, um, that we had to have, you know, orcs versus humans, basically. Wait, 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 just uh, a minute here. Wow. You said that originally WoW wasn't supposed to have faction right. split? I couldn't yeah. imagine. Yeah, that the, the whole most of the team was like an EverQuest. They were all EverQuest fans. Right. And EverQuest didn't have a faction split, right? They had you know, you had, you had trolls and you had humans, and the humans couldn't go to the troll town, and the trolls couldn't go to the human town, but trolls and humans could, you know, group as much as they wanted, just like anything else. So um, that's that was the basis for, you know, what WoW was going to be. And so I, one night, just wrote this huge <laughs> paper about why PvP was important, why factions were important, why... Um, you know, competitiveness was important. And I was kind of just out of my mind. I was quoting Fight Club and, you know, in, in this like rant. And uh, nice. um, I gave it to him. And then he came in the next day and he's like, yeah, I basically agree with everything he just wrote. So, and then he started convincing one by one everyone else that we absolutely needed um, factions in the game. So, and uh, faction connection is one of those things that I think. Um, shines when it comes to like your identity like when you talk about yourself personally um it's for the horde for the alliance that's probably the the one thing that stands above like yes your class is important yes your race is important but 
which faction you're on, I think for most people is sort of number one when it comes to identity. Yeah. I mean, people were putting horrid stickers on their cars and it was kind of crazy, right? And and we were treating each other differently because like another question I wanted to ask you, Car Gaz, back in middle school was, did you know other classmates that were playing and did the horde go to one side and did the alliance go to the other in Yo, your class? So I, I originally, my first character was a Tauren warrior on the Illyria realm. It was normal because I didn't know what that realm meant, right? So I made a Tauren warrior mm -hmm. and I got to level 17 and I was so happy because I got my friends involved, right? right? And I was like, yo, I'm going to have a huge advantage over them. I'm level 17 already. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. be like the big Chad in the middle school. Like, you know, I'll be way higher than them. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, nah, we're going to go alliance. So I had to reroll. Right. I had to reroll alliance with them, but it's just so crazy. <laughs> I can't imagine. Type something in the chat if you if you can even envision a WoW with no factions. The fact that right, you drove right. that forward is like shattering like the fa that like everything right now. That's just yeah, and, and it and like it affected the way you interacted with people in real life. You know, like oh, you play WoW, awesome. Oh, you play the uh, alliance. Oh. Yeah, but I, I got a really funny. Like, story. I don't think we can be friends. You know, like <laughs> I'm not going to date you. You're dear God. What? Yes, Kevin. <laughs> first, okay. Let me let you say. Do you still have that document and can I buy it from you? No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'd love to see it um, myself. So the night that uh um the night that uh Wrath of Liching came out was a midnight release, right? Mm -hmm. And I go to GameStop to pick it up, and there's this whole giant line outside, and um, you know, there's this really cute girl, and I had like just gotten out of rehab recently, so I'm like kind of like awkward and like not really right. uh talkative, kind of you know, socially awkward, and we go in there. And the girl starts talking to me. I said, oh, you're here for a while, you know, this, that, and the other. And we start talking, and she's really cute, right? So, mm -hmm. and I go, so, and, uh, what, what, I'm like, you know, where do you play? And she's like, oh, I play on so-and-so server, and I play a, a female uh, night elf hunter. And I'm just like, oh, how did I know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. And I just walked I away totally from it. <laughs> I just walked away from it. I mean, I hate female night elf hunters so much, but it's, yeah. really, it's so funny because I just... I just I, I couldn't say anything. I just walked away. And I'm like, right. hey, no, never mind. What? No slash spit? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were representing. <laughs> I couldn't imagine Azeroth without Horde and Alliance. Like, I yeah, mean, we so, are such. Yeah. yeah, it's such. An Obviously, amazing. yeah, it worked out, right? But so I'm pretty proud of that from a project. Yeah, I, thank God. Yeah, the shot gone very differently. Yeah. <laughs> We got the poor Dunedain here, the only Alliance player. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Kevin, you played Proud Alliance back in the day, right? Proud or, Alliance but, I'm, but I have to apologize. I know it's hard enough to find, you know, a loved one in this in this crazy world. And all I've done <laughs> is divide you further. So for every person Chad who's missed out on a dating opportunity, as rare as they are for us gamers, I apologize because of the faction split. <laughs> Yep. Kevin, you're the reason I'm single. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your favorite class, actually, Kevin? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I get asked that a ton, too. But they're, all nine of them are my children. They're all beautiful and amazing and flawed. And, you know, so, yeah, I don't really have a favorite one. I will tell you that my two characters I kept high level um, or max level back when I was playing was um, an undead mage. But that was second to what was essentially the one I put the most time into, which was a human Redden. So, oh. um, which was uh, partly because I knew their struggles and wanted to be the inside man. You know, I wanted to know ah. exactly what they were experiencing and going through because I recognized that that class was struggling from a class fantasy standpoint, and so I wanted to be elbow deep in the experience to better better pull them out of it. So. Maybe now is the time for my paladin questions. Yeah, yeah go, ahead, Dune, go ahead. So yeah. I had like a thousand, so I tried to <coughs> make two out of them. Um, <laughs> first, first up, um, well, the tier two set is like the, my favorite set in, in in the entirety of the game. I don't know if you actually had a hand in in the the items as well, but the tier two set um, looks yeah, yeah. Tier two is pretty amazing. Um, I didn't artistically know, or stat-wise. I did f give feedback on the set bonuses um, in a lot of cases, but yeah, the item guys or item guy did those for the most part. So, okay. Now, even though it looks the most amazing, it's mm -hmm. basically just like one of the worst sets you can wear as a healer uh, right now in class. Right. Yeah. So, um, when I look back at like paladins from the first patch till the last, uh, they changed quite a bit, right? So you had the mm -hmm. talent moved, like Blessing of Kings was, I think it was like a 31 talent in red, if I remember correctly. Right, or early in, on. In yeah. yeah. 
Um, so I wondered, was it like originally supposed to be a hybrid, more of, of a real hybrid class where you were in raids buffing and then sometimes swing the hammer and then sometimes throwing heal, a throwing a heal. Right. That was, was like essentially, that? that is the uh, class fantasy, I believe. Um, like when you imagine what is it going to be like when I play a Redditon, right? Your idea is I'm going to run in with my two-handed hammer, going to smack the crap out of stuff. And then occasionally I'm going to be healing, or at least I'm going to be contributing to the healing in some way. Mm. Um, and then, of course, buffing and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and, yeah, that class, that particular spec probably had the worst time of meeting their class fantasy, right? Mm. Um, and that's kind of what I mean But when I say, like... Um, I, w I wanted to get in there and really understand and play it and see what I had to do to, to realize that dream. Um, but hybrid is, I don't think the right word. Um, like I don't consider the only class I consider to be a true hybrid in design philosophy was the original Druid, mm. um, where it was shape shifting constantly. Um, but we moved away from that pretty quickly as well. So, when I think of hybrid, I think of someone that can do multiple roles at the same time very effectively. And I don't think there's any of those in reality in WoW. Because um, all the specs lead you to do one job essentially pretty well. Yeah, but if you look at like um, the old specs like mm -hmm. before the talent changed, I would say those were more of the hybrid style where you could basically um, be holy but still swing your hammer a bit or right, how right. you need it. So is it is, is was there a switch to more specific roles somewhere during? The yeah, I, I think we, I think over time we started out with this idea that they would be capable of at more jobs than just one, but we realized how tricky that is to actually pull off, and what that does to, um, like first of all, what it means to be successful, especially in a raid setting. It's like if you're ten percent off the pace in a raid setting, then you're not viable, right? Mm -hmm. is, is the way a lot of raiders feel. So um, a hybrid that comes in at 90%, 90% of two different things mm. isn't really viable, right? Yeah. Even though they're a hybrid, you need specialists at the raid level. So you need guys, you know, every guy doing 100% of one job, right? So, um, but that's not to say that, like, um, when I'm tanking Sunken Temple, I can't be healing myself or healing someone else occasionally while I'm tanking, right? Which is something a paladin can do or the druid when it comes, you know, you know, whatever hits the fan, he can pop out and throw some heals, you know, as, as a bear, you know, or, or go into bear form when he's pulled aggro from too much healing uh, because the main tank doesn't have enough mitigation or whatever it is. Right. Mm. So um, there are hybrid experiences that you have, but um, it sort of depends on what, what you're expecting from the environment you're in, right? Because raid is very different than sort of running around leveling solo or participating in small group stuff and that kind of thing. So um, over time, I think you'll see that historically, a lot of the changes, again, were pushed towards that raid game because the raid, raid people are very vocal. They're very competitive um, and they want, you know, what they want is very different than what the rank and file want in terms of competency. So it was something yeah. we learned with the Druid very early on. And that's what moved us away from his hybrid philosophy was it's not, it's not good enough to be 90%. You can be as good at, as all the jobs at 90%. You're still not going to get invited to the raid. So mm -hmm. um, you have to be a hundred percent at something. And so we started steering them towards this is the tank tree. This is the DPS tree. This is the heel tree, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, same with uh, the paladin and, and all the other kind of, you know, stranger combinations, you know, shaman, etc. So I'm probably um, the, the goal. Sorry, go on. Okay, I'm probably the only person in the world who would have liked to see uh, Classic Lounge with five minute blessings because I think it right. might have given the opportunity to play like the more um, support slash hybrid style. Yeah. Yeah. Your basic to, blessing and then healing a bit and then doing something. Right. Like. It actually was the original design. The blessings were actually supposed to be higher impact and shorter duration originally. Um, we fell into, we ended up falling into this middle ground that didn't feel great of five minutes and lower impact. Obviously, they still have pretty good impact, but lower than what they were originally designed at. So the idea kind of was that 
you know, he'd be swinging his hammer and then, you know, at, at times during the fight, he would hit the rogue with a big DPS buff, you know, for 30 seconds. And so the timing of that was perfect. You know, like you don't want to get it in transition stages of a boss fight. You want to wait till he's able to do 30 seconds of good damage and put it on your highest DPS guy and let him run. And, um, and then other things like, you know, the tank buff and a healer buff and things like that, that made them much better at their job. But you did, you know, like you were pushing essentially more support buttons throughout. So mm -hmm. that was one of the original designs. Um, but yeah, we moved away from that. Almost like totems, almost. Uh, you know how totems yeah, are. Similar, yeah, 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 more yeah. single targeted totems, right? Friend targeted mm -hmm. totems. So interesting. Um, yeah. I have one more. Actually, I started with the, the tier two because I thought it was designed for that more of support hybrid style, maybe. Because you have stats of basically everything, right? But my second mm -hmm. uh, question was um, the seal system and the judge system. Yes. I think it's it's very unique. Um, mm -hmm. Like one of the one of the things you're proud of, or is it something that you think could have been better? Because it was yeah, changed. It definitely a lot could have been time. better. Yeah. Okay. That was one that we didn't have enough time to iterate on, just flat out. Um, there were a couple things we didn't have time for. One was uh, more time to work on the hunter um, resource system. Uh, we wanted to change it from mana to energy, not energy. Focus. Oh, what's it what's it called? Focus. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. called. Um, yeah, we wanted it. We, so we gave that a shot and we couldn't quite get it there. So we changed it back to mana at the end. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if we had had a little more time, we might have been able to work out how to get a, fo a different resource bar on him. And the other one was the seal judgment system. Just didn't have, it was one of the last things I put in um, and didn't have enough time to... Um, you know, really iterate and refine it. So that's why it went through a lot of changes pretty early on because that was, I had to use live time um, to get those changes in and to really iterate and experiment. So it, uh, yeah, it didn't work out as well. I think it worked out pretty well in some respects and it was very unique, but um, yeah, there were some things that yeah, could have been a lot better from the get go. Mostly, I think, sorry, oh, I think sorry. many, many paladins really, really enjoy the system. Um, mm -hmm. If I play now a paladin in, in BFA, for example, it's it's basically just totally gone. Um, so right. I wonder, that's probably the last, uh, I wonder, do you think they changed it too much? Is that like the soul of the paladin clause? Is that gone <laughs> by removing uh, that system? Yeah, like, I, I think that's a complaint a lot of players have, and I think it's justified. Um, you'll see like combo points kind of everywhere on classes nowadays. Um, and yeah, in the process, they've stripped away a lot of those things because each class when we were originally designing that we wanted them to not only feel different and play different but look different uh especially if you saw one in action right so totems like is one of those things that defines what a shaman feels mm -hmm. like and looks like and it's like what is that guy and then it's like oh, he pops a totem oh there's no question right right um and but the retail sh shaman doesn't even throw totems anymore so yeah. <laughs> like or it's like one spec throws all four at once, I think. But yeah, um, yeah. So like when it's like, wow, I stopped feeling like a shaman. You know, like I can understand that because that was specifically one of those things that identified you as the shaman, right? Like made you feel so different, both mechanically and visually. So, um, and I think that was really important. So paladin, same way, like. Um, there were, you know, different ways that they played and different ways that they, things that they did and how their spells looked um, that were identifiable. And again, it's it's about, as I was mentioning before, it's about offering a variety of different experiences so that different players get joy from different places in the game. You know, so I've always considered the Paladin to be uh, a more strategic class, right? Um, and a more reactive class, like you're not a button monkey where you're just constantly pushing every button, every global cooldown, right? You're thinking and you're waiting and you're planning and you're figuring out when's the right time to do the right thing, right? So it's not checkers, boys, it's chess, <laughs> right? Didn't yeah, you say yeah, that? Yeah, like yeah. for beginners? And, uh, you know, Rogue so is for checkers, you know, that's checkers. Yeah. You guys like checkers, yeah. go play a Rogue, right? You're spamming <laughs> buttons, you have ADHD. <laughs> yeah. Totally yeah, fine, absolutely. Right? get in there. Yeah. Um, so again, like it, it appeals to different types of players, right? Yeah. Um, and, and people, a lot of people laugh at the Paladin because they, oh, that's a joke. <laughs> He's not pushing his buttons every, you know, what a lame class. 
Oh, it's kind of um, hard to do bubble hearthstone, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> right. It is very hard. The timing required. Jeez. <laughs> so, so, Kevin, another another big uh, thing that a lot of people are probably um, really curious about is uh, you mentioned factions. First of all, that's mind blowing. You know, the idea that there could mm-hmm. have potentially been no factions. And this is just like a big lingering question in the community that always comes up almost every other stream. You know, did Alliance get, is there Alliance favoritism? Is there Horde mm. favoritism? You know, did they spend right. 10 times longer on the Alliance leveling experience? Is the Horde leveling experience? I don't know if you have right. any thoughts around that entire sort of bucket of questions. If not, you know, yeah, maybe I it's do. just as simple as whatever. And then the other last question to tie onto that is what on earth is that portal in the Stormwind, um, like b- gated behind Stormwind? What? And it's like swirling around. It's like a really, really big portal. Right. Okay, so that one, I mean, that one's easy to, to answer quickly. Um, that was going to lead to player housing neighborhoods. Oh. Wow. But we never put in player housing. Um, we can talk about that why later. Um, mm. But the other question was their favoritism. So at the end of the day, no, there wasn't favoritism. Um, the team was pretty split you know, between Horde and Alliance as far as what people were playing amongst designers and the rest of the team. So, um, and, uh, you know, I always say uh, it's shocking to me that it actually turned out that way because usually there's going to be a bias, right? Mm-hmm. But I was actually pretty shocked that it was it was really close to 50-50. And especially when I consider how just absolutely lame the Alliance is, right? Yeah, so, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> from that, from that point, you know, there's there wasn't any bias, but here's what I will say: uh, when we were developing WoW, um, we had to figure out. Like you guys probably heard the term "vertical slice," which is what a lot of companies use to deliver. Like this is a version of the product that sort of tells you what the whole experience is going to be like, or it gives you some idea. It's sort of a showpiece, you know, for moving forward. Um, a lot of companies use it to secure funding, right? Uh, we didn't have to do that at Blizzard, but we still wanted to know what what the game experience was essentially like, um, you know, in its at its heart, right? So we we focused on three zones at the start, um, and it was Elwyn, Westfall, and Duskwood, and we tweaked those zones and we played those zones. And we iterated on those zones for probably nine months to a year, right? That's how long we spent on just those three zones. Wow. Um, And there was a time where we had to double the size of it. And all the level designers just about quit because they were like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Like, I have to remake these zones completely. You can't just double the size of something. You have to remap everything, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but we decided, yeah, the world was just too tiny, you know, half as small as it needed to be. So, um, and we put in quests and we put in creatures and we put in stories and we, you know, all that stuff. And we focused on those three zones for a huge amount of time to just help us define what the core experience was like. Right. And then after we did that, when it was all done, we were like, okay, this is the core experience. This is, this is what we should do with the rest of the world. And the producers are like, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't spend a year on every three zones. <laughs> right. And so we tried to reduce it to the core elements. Right. And then, you know, get as much done as we could. And we didn't even get all the way. Right. Still this, for example. Um, but that's why if you play those three zones, you'll notice that the experience kind of is head and shoulders above the rest of the game. But it's only those three zones, right? All the other alliance zones got just as much work as all the other horde zones, right? So if you're asking about those three zones, absolutely. We spent more time on those three. but uh, And we weren't just going to toss the, out the, all the extra awesomeness just because it wasn't on par with the rest of the world. So, um, But yeah, at the end of the day, we didn't have time to do the the Elwyn Westfall Duskwood treatment to the entire world, sadly. But that's why like the Defia storyline is so mm. memorable. You know, it starts at level one and it finishes in the dead mines with Van Cleef, like, and the whole thing is just so connected and everything feels so great. So um, good. Yeah. We couldn't quite do that. We just didn't have the time everywhere else so. Is there, so is there any truth that it was 90 percent of the time spent to an alliance 10 percent they just whipped up the horde side together in the barons or is it closer <laughs> to like 60 40 50 50 or maybe that's not even a good way to look at it yeah 90 10 is ridiculous but um 
Because I mean, if you think about, and a lot of those zones are shared, right? So the idea is we're really only talking about low levels, right? The ones that seem for certain classes. Um, so we're looking at sort of starting areas um, up to about, you know, probably through the Red Ridge, like 25, 30. Um, and after that, it's like, you know, is Stranglethorn Vale a, an alliance zone or a horde zone, right? That's why we're fighting over it constantly. Right. Because we're trying to ex- establish dominance. <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, that zone was created for both sides. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that there's like, I think it's a lot of it is just uh, that feel of those three zones I mentioned, like if, and that's where humans, right? That's where humans started. And that's where a lot of people start the game as a human. So um, I can definitely see going from the human starting experience to any other race in the game, you're going to feel like, oh, they didn't put as much work into this. And, you know, that's why. So Night Elf is pretty good, though. I like, but it's probably the the atmosphere and music and all that stuff. Right. (laughs) There's always just, yeah, that personal connection with different zones. Some people love certain areas versus others, and it's kind of personal thing. Yeah, from a hoardy all my life, I think the Barrens is an all-encompassing fe- feeling when I get, when I go there. Yeah. You're there for so long, and it's just mm-hmm. so vast. And I think it's—I uh, I don't notice if there's any kind of imbalance because I feel like the Barrens yeah. is just everything for me as a hoardy. Yeah. 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 So that's another big thing that I think we've lost over the years is, um, you know, like you, you, a sign of success when you're talking about world building, and again, the, the best content being the players is the personalities of various zones that you know, pop up over time, right? The Barons has a specific legendary personality for the way people behave in that zone, right? Stranglethorn has a specific personality. It has its own, you know, it's its own character, right? Uh, Terran Mill, South Shore, it had that place. Hills Brad has its own character, right? Uh, Compare that to what is the character of zones in MMOs nowadays, right? Like, do you feel like they have a like socially or community driven personality. Hmm. And it's like, I don't really know that or feel that. Um, and I'd love to hear a story about the way certain zones in modern MMOs, you know, have created that sense of identity and that kind of thing, but it doesn't happen as much anymore. And that's, that's kind of a telling it's telling that not enough work has gone into supporting that sense of world and the sense of social connection in the games that, these places sort of build up their own personalities that we remember and take with us. I couldn't agree more. I, uh, Kevin, I always say uh, other than the other people in the game, the, the second biggest interaction or person that you're, you're, you're is, is the world itself is the, is the, you know, I've always felt like the world itself and the uh, zones are one of the biggest interactions that you have. And for me, you know, I, I'm a hoardy through and through. I love it, but my first character, mm-hmm. unfortunately, was an alliance rogue. I got him to level sixty, <laughs> and uh, but I, that that first moment it's of okay. walking into Stormwind, yeah, it's okay. Everyone has a chance <laughs> to mature. You know, we, That's right. <laughs> I actually, I actually I'll sent uh, uh, a DM a message. <laughs> I said, "Please let me re-roll," but yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, but that first moment of walking into Stormwind and the music going and and that mm-hmm. feeling of the connection okay. to the zone, the story to the zone, you know, the whole thing with the Nixie and the Defias and and there's an element of like almost a soul to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and and I don't I haven't felt that soul of a zone mm-hmm. in 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 a game in such a long time. I mean, for me, I think the Burning Crusade did that in, in a lot of ways as well. I mean, you had um, you know, certain, I mean, people always talk about like, what's your favorite zone? Negron, Negron, Negron. People love Negron. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what, 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 like, I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Burning Crusade is, you know, you guys really built upon the foundation that, that Vanilla was, right? So Vanilla was the foundation. And for me, the Burning Crusade is so much, I feel like there, you know, obviously there were some things, you know, like, like you said, looking back, um, flying and this and the other, but going into the burning crusade building upon that foundation not only with the world but with the classes like i feel personally that the class designs in the burning crusade are are perfect uh, mm-hmm. almost um yeah. you know the amount of things that you had the choice that like say from a priest you know 
I have prayer of mending. I have, you know, circle of healing. Mm -hmm. I have all these different choices, all these different things that were added to the game. It makes me feel like every choice I make, you know, also having to manage mana, also having to do, you know, all these things um, to me is just absolutely perfect. And right. there were some things that I, I, I wondered because, you know, priests in vanilla were, were so the only um, class in the game that had, um, well, there were, you know, uh, but racials for, for the, for the class. Right. So you had um, obviously, you know, dwarfs had fear ward um, mm -hmm. undead. We had devouring plague. And I wonder why in BC did you, they start to shy away from that a little bit um, because it, it was one element of vanilla that I really loved. Obviously there were still some, like you had chastise for dwarves in the burning crusade. Um, mm. You know, there were, so there were some things added, but everyone was given fear ward, right? Which was, right. was so OP. Um, was it just because <laughs> it was that powerful, I guess, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. The, those things are tough to, to, um, what's the right word to be resolute, you know, about over time. And, um, you know, another, another trend you guys have all noticed is the connection between developers and the community has gotten much closer or over mm. the years, right? Like back in the day, none of you guys had any idea who I was and what I was doing. <laughs> right. Um, there was a real healthy distance <laughs> between me and you guys. Yeah. Um, and that helped me do my job, right? You guys had to interact with community managers that were trained to do that job and allowed me to to do what I'm trained to do, which is my job. Um, but uh, a lot of developers, now that they're real close to the community, uh, we're all human beings, right? And it's like when you're constantly bombarded by fear ward is OP, fear ward is BS, you know, yeah, like yeah. at the end of the day, you kind of want people to like you, right? So it's yeah. very tough to endure like... Um, just constant badgering about fear ward, right? And so you're always pushed to like just give fear ward to everyone, you know, make yeah. everyone happy, right? So that's one element of it. Um, I've always said that you have to have the right amount of ego, you know, to do this job because you 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 have to have enough to resist the, those temptations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just to be liked by everyone, you have to tell people sometimes, no, it's better for the game that. Fear Ward is a special thing for dwarves, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, but not a, not so much ego that you come across as like, you know, this arrogant a-hole that never listens to anybody, right? Yeah. Um, but some of that is good, you know, like some of that built-in resistance to say no to the community is actually pretty important because you want your vision to ultimately be realized and not everyone that's playing believes in, understands, you know, or agrees with your vision, right? And so you have to be able to tell those people that's not the direction we're going, right? And it's tough, you know, it's tougher even now because, yeah, again, because the distance between developer and community is so much closer these days. You can get them on screen. You can have individual chats with them, right? And, you know, they're human beings too. It's so true. <clears throat> like, that, those are those, those words. He's still a robot, but. Those words really hit home for me. When I was a little kid playing, yeah. I know some of you guys out in the chat, it always felt like Blizzard had bigger, batter, uh, bigger better things to do. Like, you like to get a hold mm -hmm. of a, a Blizzard GM or something. Was right. This crazy thing. Right. Now it feels like, um, too, like you can tweet at him, you know, and something will happen, yeah, you know, right. which, is, yeah. which is a strange like, kind of twilight zone we're in. Yeah. Um, and it's an, it creates that expectation, too, that not only can I, but it should change, right? Exactly. Like, now, going Whereas back before, to it's like you had to trust them, right? For better or worse, you had yep. to trust the guys behind the curtain that they wanted to make a great experience. They were there and, you know, to make a great experience. And they were good at it, you know? Like, you guys had to trust. <laughs> and we made mistakes, but, um, yeah, I mean, our hearts were in the right place. And I still think the heart, their hearts are in the right place on the WoW yeah. retail team, you know? But, um yeah, it's uh, it, it's become harder to trust them because of that, you know, very communication. Harder. It's very, very harder. Very now, now, yeah. now, going back to classic, um, it, and it may not necessarily be a mistake. Like when you just look back at your baby, which is a classic, or no, not classic. Mm -hmm. I keep using it wrong. Where, um, what do you refer to it as? <laughs> vanilla, vanilla, or original? Just yeah, or vanilla. Vanilla. When you look back at vanilla and the whole timeline, you know, I mean, if anything was a mistake that you wish you could have changed in your own you know, in your own separate alternate universe, maybe something jumps mm -hmm. out at you there, but also what do you wish, if anything, could have been added to the vanilla uh, game or does anything stick out like regrets, mistakes, um, improvement? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that we, I didn't fulfill. One of my dreams was um, more world PVP, um, more design around world PVP. 
naturally, it, it, it happened naturally, but um, there were no incentives, there were no rewards, right? Like other than just dominance and flexing and bragging rights, but and and a good time. It was also a good time, but because um, I was the PvP guy, obviously, because I'm the one who mm. pitched the factions. <laughs> you know, I, I came from a more PvP oriented background in games, whereas they all came from EverQuest, or most of them came from EverQuest, where PvP was seen as a griefing thing. And they were just fine not having it at all. But um, but my first love was class design. So that's what I ended up focusing on. And I didn't have time to also do real PvP. So um, I had to get all nine classes up and working and, you know, ready to go. So that's one of my regrets is that I didn't have more time to um, work on world PvP. And so it kind of got left to the wayside. Um and eventually, you know, some design went in later on. But even then, I wasn't a, a huge participant in that because I was so busy with the classes. So um, that's something I wish we had done more of. Yeah. Kev, okay, real quick, going back to Def Camp's question, uh, just I don't think I've ever heard this answer. Why were priests the only class that had racial specific abilities? Oh, uh, because uh, priests, you know, like it was sort of our expression of religion in the game, even though there isn't yeah. technically oh. religion in the game. And so it felt very strange to have such a wide variety of cultures as represented by the races have such a one dimensional, you know, religious aspect. Huh. So it was sort of our way of help fleshing out the different cultures, right? Like, I mean, because when you ask somebody, clearly an undead priest has a very different outlook on the world than a human priest. Hell right? yeah. yeah. And so um, we tried to give you know, the class, a couple extra abilities to help, you know, sort of flavor them or again, thematically connect them with what we believe to be their culture and that kind of thing. So um, it was, we wanted to do it for all the classes, but, or sorry, yeah, like all the classes, like an orc warrior would have a special ability versus a dwarf warrior, but um, I felt it was critical to do it for the the priest and we ended up not having time to do it for every other class, Hmm. so. Great Thank matter. you for doing it for priest. I uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to say to another thing, uh, racials, right? So racials are mm-hmm. uh, very important to classic WoW, and I think mm-hmm. as time went on, racials became less and less important. Um, right. You know, you have this thing where you know, like like uh, act specialization uh, right. for orcs, right? Or um, you know, berserking uh, for trolls, and like you know, I, I love being a, a like I love the fact that I can be a Tarn elemental shaman who can go in there war stomp and then chain lightning and like you know they're so pivotal to the gameplay. And mm-hmm. like, wow, the racials and I think it was such an interesting thing to see over time how they you know people was oh this racial so overpowered and this one's overpowered. Right. But I think you know each each class has these very distinct features you know and you have you know stone form for dwarfs and obviously there's the metas that come out right you have mm-hmm. uh, you know if you're going to be a, a warrior on the alliance got to be human if you're going to be a warrior on the on the horde you got to be orc there's ways to get around it you know edge masters and stuff like that but i think what initially happened was you see you know you get this people who gravitate towards certain uh uh, races like you know, I always said, like Tarns are, are bros, right? They're like really, you know, bro, chill people. Um, but it just it changed the play style of so many of these classes. You know, mm-hmm. um, being like a, a Tarn a warrior who can go in there and war stomp, um, right. you know, and get and get mobs and stuff like that. Uh, were you integral in the uh, decision when it came to racials and stuff like that? Yeah, for sure. And to tell you a little bit about the design, um, we designed some of them to be. We wanted one, at least one, to be the high power one or the power relevant one and one to be more flavorful that was not power relevant. Mm. And so, but, and people love to compare, right? They'll point to your strong one and then they'll compare it to their weak one and they'll say, see, this is totally BS, right? (laughs) Uh, But the comparisons are kind of intentionally unfair, right? They also don't, uh, they don't talk about the intangibles, right? Like, yeah, sure. Maybe shadow meld isn't very usable on a lot of, you know, on a lot of classes in a lot of situations, but if you play a female night elf, you know, don't forget that you're being given tons of free gold and gear by, you know, <laughs> dudes on the internet, right? So that's, true, yeah. that's just one of those intangibles that people don't yeah. want to talk about. That's <laughs> absolutely true. So, again, it's like, but it, ultimately it's, it's designed to, um, 
complete like what you'd expect again the thematic of what does it feel like to be a tauren you know it, it feels like i should be able to just stomp the ground and everyone shudders you know and that came of course straight out of warcraft 3 but mm-hmm. um that just feels good it feels big and powerful and um makes me feel like i'm this big race you know um and then also it, it helps create replayability you know for, even with if you're going to replay the same class you know so you know a dwarf a dwarf hunter you know is is the cinematic guy with the rifle and the bear you know and then yeah. you go play you know a troll hunter and you're probably you might have a bow or maybe one of those rare crossbows and you have a raptor pet you know like again replayability the same class but you're getting a very different experience hopefully so it helps with those kind of things wow so i i think um i'd like to transition if it's okay with everyone else to something that's kind of a little more future oriented but i I, I feel, see, I've had the opportunity to talk to Kevin about Shaman, and I know his mindset, and I know, you know, from that perspective. Do you guys want to open up and see if we can get some class specific questions in chat before we transition, Cargos? Because I want to talk about TBC uh, big time for a little bit mm-hmm. before we say goodbye. Does that sound. For, for, yeah, from my perspective, I mean, the class balance is what it is. So, you know, the I don't have anything, you, you know. Actually, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't either, but I'm yeah. sure chat might. But, I, have, yeah. I have one yeah. left, about okay. Warrior specifically. So mm-hmm. what you see in classic is um, like guilds running twenty warriors and stuff. That's right. not the issue. But uh, what you recently see now is um, tanking without shield, like fury mm-hmm. tanks. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yes. If, if that's something that would have happened during uh, actual vanilla, is it something you would have changed and would have made warriors use a shield tank? Uh, I wouldn't have forced it, but I think here's here's one of the big problems. Um, well, one is there's that weird bug with heroic strike, right? Which, mm-hmm. um, um, what does it do? I believe it. Heroic so, strike queuing? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So basically, and you should. It normalizes hit off on the offhand. You sh- you're supposed okay. to get a. You have a penalty okay. on hit when you're dual wielding, but it normalizes right. that. Yeah. So it is a DPS and threat generator, right? This mm-hmm. bug that you know helps you do more threat than you probably should, right? Uh, but I think ultimately, you know, I think where the game shines the best is that tanks are struggling to maintain high levels of mitigation and threat, and they're not worried about damage, right? Their core concerns are mitigation and threat, and that's their job, right? And the best way to accomplish that, hopefully, is, you know, defensive stance <laughs> with a shield, you know, that sort of thing. Um but it's it's also natural that once thing go, things go on farm status and the game, like you've sort of mastered the game, that everybody sort of loosens up, right? And and part of that loosening up means you can start doing weird things like naked runs on Anixia or, mm. um, you know, everyone's running meme specs, you know, whatever it is, right? So I'm totally fine with, um, you know, it, eventually the game getting to that point, but I think... I think the game is, you know, at a, at a good design place when people are encouraged and, and in some cases required mathematically to do the things that you would expect to be the things you're supposed to do, right? So very intuitive, right? The intuition should be, I'm about to tank a big dragon, so I better strap on my shield and go into defensive yeah. stance and be scared of this dragon's damage, right? Um and so I think that's where the game sort of is at its best, right? But I'm not surprised, you know, and Classic is such a weird animal because we've been hammering on it on private servers, you know, et cetera, for 15 years that I'm not surprised that a lot of this stuff is coming out and everything is, you know, easier for a lot of people but, um, and st- stuff like this is happening. But it certainly wouldn't have been my design intent that the best way to tank a dragon is to be dual wheel fury, right? Like yeah, right. That, would have, that would have signaled to me that, um, the game's not hitting hard enough. Uh, the spec, you know, the, the spec I intend for you to be using isn't isn't um, isn't required enough. You know, like the advantages it's giving aren't you know powerful enough in the th- ways that you need them. So well, I would have looked at it for sure. That's I what, think- what's happening right now, right? I just want well, one yeah. thing. Yeah. Really but I think it's just have- ultimately it's more of a reflection of how. You know, the, a lot of the content is considered easy by today's right, standards. World, world buffs, mastered it. I think so. world, yeah. uh, also, but without world buffs, it's still an issue, I think. But anyway, uh, we now have found a way to generate even more threat, uh, which is by using mm-hmm. a paladin 
using right the, um, that's another bug i would have yeah. fixed right like okay. i don't think that's the intent it's also not a great play pattern is you spamming the same buff on a group of classes it to is, generate yeah. threat you know the other like, hand it does make it worthwhile to bring a prospect yes now, yes so, so yeah. i'm happy about that but again i'd rather I'd rather the ultimate place for me is a design space where the paladin's being brought on his merits and it's a fun play pattern that makes sense and it's intuitive for him rather than some weird way of getting him in the game because of some what I would perceive as a bug and he's doing really oddball things. Well, if you don't wear pants and you, you know, push this series of buttons, you know, in just the right order that feels really clunky and weird, that's how you tank, you know, like I would want to mm -hmm. fix that. So my, so my last thing that uh, I've been dying to get off my chest here um, is pretty much related to this uh, community that we've all been kind of participating and building towards called the, the Hardcore Challenge, Hardcore Community. So we're basically um, experiencing the world with one life. And it, yeah. it, 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 well, oftentimes we have these like these moments where we're like, man, it really feels like the world was almost um, designed to be like this. And, uh, you know, one right. of the aspects of the Hardcore Challenge is solo self-found, which is, I guess, another term they've used in these types mm -hmm. of games and Diablo and stuff where, you know, there's no trading, there's no auction yeah. house. And uh, we're finding weird workarounds to get deep, deep, you know, stuff in professions done through fishing, mm -hmm. through through skinning, awesome. and doing weird things like that. So, you know, I, you know, any guidance you have on that front on how to keep that community going? I mean, the community just feels amazing. It's all those original vanilla right. vibes there. Um, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's hopefully a turning point where people can start viewing the game more as a sandbox and not just experiencing it. You know, just right. killing the dragon. Now you're you're setting your own fun, all that. But I guess yep. to get to the actual question in this. Um, what are your thoughts on the auction house and player trading? You know, is that right. something that you purely uh -huh. feel good about or is your, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Somebody just asked me on discord recently. Um, to, first to just talk about the hardcore thing. I, I love it. I think it's amazing. Um, and I think the reason it's so popular that you guys have, have discovered and you've even mentioned is it's, it's bringing that sense of real danger back. It's really, you know, it's bringing that sense of like, you're scrambling for components, you're scrambling for items, you know, like, you don't exactly know where everything is, right? So you're having to, to go through that process of discovery and it's turning you back into a real WoW gamer, right? Like, <laughs> um, and it's exciting, you know, it's exciting to, to get those juices flowing again, right? And especially in a game that you've played to death, right? So, um, and, and unfortunately it's, you had to make your own game, essentially. You had to create your own rule set and which I totally love, um, but uh, it's sad that you're forced to do that, right? Because the, the game industry itself is struggling to put forward <laughs> this type of game experience, right? Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love it. So um, keep enjoying that. It's amazing. That feels so good to get to get the Kevin yeah. Jordan blessing right there. Um, <laughs> that's right. That's right. I mean, blessed, blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, and about the auction house, like, uh, it was close. That was one of those things that we argued about a lot, whether or not to put the auction house in. Mm. Um, but uh, here, and I feel, I feel, I feel like it was always the correct decision because this is in today's age. This is something you guys can envision, um, and I think would be horrible. But imagine life without the auction house, right? You go into Iron Forge, and the chat channels are spammed with bots advertising wares in every channel, right? Mm. <laughs> because they're trying to connect goods to customers, right? Uh, because there's no other natural way to do it, right? So it would turn it would turn every channel into an unusable mess, right? So, mm. um, and it would even be unusable from a trading standpoint because you, as a person, you can't really find what you're looking for, right? <laughs> when it's like all this stuff is being spammed past you, right? Like. I want this one thing, you know, it's like, good luck. <laughs> good luck finding a stack of linen, you know, like <laughs> yeah, right. in this just giant mess of spam. Right. So I, I, ultimately I think the the auction house was the correct decision, but it was a tough one for us because it eliminated a lot of that person to person interaction, which at its heart, I think is really important for a crafting, you know, uh, marketing, sort of trade skill to player relationship, right? There's a lot of socialization that can go on um, when people are trying to find, you know, connect again, connect goods to customers, right? And that's kind of stuff is really memorable because you remember who your guy is like, oh, I got a guy for that, you know, like I know a guy who sells healing potions. I'm going to go to him and I love it when he's on and I can, I tip him because yeah. I bought a hundred of them from him, you know, and he feels great. He 
that's all he wants to do is run around the world and collect ingredients to make healing potions. So he feels like he's <laughs> part of the world and he's got his customer base and people like him. And, you know, he, he ends up being the big guy for healing pots. And so he feels like he's the king of the market. You know, like there's so many good things that come about from that sort of experience. And we tried to tweak the auction house to, to simulate that by making sure that the name of the seller is on the auction house and stuff like that. But it didn't quite get there. And it's very possible there's a middle ground design where it's like, it's not quite the auction house, but it's not bot spam. Uh, maybe there's specific areas, you know, where you can set up vendors and the vendors are zoned off in certain organizational ways. And, you know, maybe there was something more we could have done with the design to sort of meet the two elements halfway. But uh, right. at the end of the day, I think the auction house was still better than not having the auction house just yeah. straight up. I, I think enchanting is sorry, sorry Jeff Camp. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, enchanting is a lot. When you have the professions, you have a lot of different ways for people to get together and uh, you know coordinate. Well, okay, let's let's. You know, this person just came on. The enchanting person just came on. Mm -hmm. Let me go talk to him. Or the you know. Right. And I think that's a cool way uh, mm -hmm. to to kind of circumvent that a little, or just still have that. But yeah. um, I just want. I know Melora wants to talk about TBC, and I just wanted to get your input on something, Kevin. Um, so. When Dunedin was talking about the the warrior and you know being able to like uh, a dual wheel tank and 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 to be able to do that, I feel like a lot of that a lot of those things are possible now mm -hmm. because of what the world buff meta has turned into. So right. you know you, you get all these people you know stacking world buffs um, and you have so much Sam and so much uh, you know uh, that that you know wearing a shield really doesn't even become necessary anymore. And you pop a right. stone shield potion, you got all these world buffs. And you're good to go, right? And I think what's happened is, you know, we, we've seen to an extent now in Classic where almost every guild goes in there stacking all the world buffs. You got your ZG buff, you got your DM buff, you got, you know, your, uh, you got everything, right? You got, you know, the Dragon Slayer, yep. even the Alliance are getting the War Chief's Blessing, you know what I mean? From mind controls and stuff like that. Um, right. So, like, you know, we talked about this before. Obviously, Meldron made a video on it, you know, uh, uh, but I, I'm wondering, like, what, you know, are your thoughts on the way it's become now where it's like everyone's mm -hmm. almost forced to do this. It feels like, you know, even if one person gets world buffs in the raid, well, now the tank's going to get it. Cause he's going to be pulling off the tank and it's like, yeah. it's this world buff effect that happens. Uh, I yeah, wonder yeah. like, what, what do you think about that? Um, well, first of all, can we, can we get some love for shaman tanks in there? Like, it, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Can, I want to hear stories of shamans clearing AQ 40, right? Like, let's go. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's possible. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, but uh, world buffs in general, yeah, like, it, unfortunately, there was just no oversight on the world buffs. Like, it was a bunch of people putting in content um, that was cool, you know? Like, it right. was flavorful and it was cool, made you feel good about doing certain things. And there was no, like, game design oversight on, like, is this too much? How do these things stack, you know? And we didn't get around to doing that oversight until TBC where we put them in categories and we limited, you know, how many you could have total and all that stuff. Right. And really taking a look at that. So it was just, again, um, it was just something we kind of missed and, um, and it became a, an emergent part of the experience of high end rating, but it's not a very healthy, like emergent, mm -hmm part of the game right so yeah uh, it takes too much time it encourages bad behavior once you have them you know the logging out and that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and then it yeah it's it's it creates a huge gap between the haves and have nots when you're trying to um you know do <laughs> you know do content you're trying to do so ultimately i think um the the right place for world buffs to land is um, if you're having trouble as a guild getting through a, a place, you know, or getting through a dungeon boss, you should be able to put in a little extra time, collect some world buffs, you know, get all your ducks in a row and get every conceivable advantage. And it can help you push, you know, help you push across the line. Right. Mm. Um, but it should be a matter of 10 or, you know, 10% or so. Right. So, right. right. Um, if it, it's not going to make the difference in a guild that really shouldn't be where they're trying to, you know, be right. So, um, but yeah, obviously we're a long way from that, um, in classic and probably still too far in TBC to be honest. But, uh, but that's, I think that's part of the contract, you know, that we, yeah, I, I, I talk about the contract between the game and the players a lot, but, uh, the contract is 
you you can get there. You can accomplish your goals by some amount of time put in and skill, right? And the amounts of each of those kind of depends on, you know, your strengths, right? So if you're really skilled at the game and you're really organized, you can probably do content without world buffs. But if you need that little extra bit of help because you're not as good and you're not as organized, not as prepared, not as present, too many guys watching Netflix on their second screen, right? <laughs> then go get those world buffs, right? And they'll help push you over the line, right? So, yeah. um, you know, I think that's, but and that's well within, right? Like, again, the core contract is that you can make up for your lack of skill a little bit by putting in more effort, more time, because... At the end of the day, we're not actually our characters. We're a bunch of sweaty nerds sitting in our chairs pretending right. we're heroes, right? So <laughs> the game should try to meet you halfway and, and help you realize that dream. By <laughs> all it requires is that you, you know, you lock yourself in your basement for a couple of weeks and you'll get it done, right? So yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. Anyway, Melrose, do you want to transition and uh, TPC? Yeah, yeah. Right? So I have I have some questions. Um, I mean, okay, I'll start with first question, Kevin. If that's okay, and I like to wait for your answer before I ask the second one. But I mean, what are the chances that Blizz screws this up and doesn't release TBC? I mean, I think that it's going to be a huge, a huge thing. Uh, if, it, if they don't do, it, I think I think they're just missing missing a huge yeah. amount of money here. Absolutely, it would have to. They would have to transition to a philosophy of like we don't like money for some reason. So, right? Yeah, yeah. they would absolutely. Yeah. They're they're absolutely yeah. going to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, learning what we learned from classic. Mm-hmm. Do you think the argument of don't change anything is still the right way to to do TBC? Uh, I I've never thought that was true. Like I have my mug here. You guys remember from you know. Classic, right? Yeah. No changes. Right, right. <laughs> classic, right? Mm. Um, I, and I, I understand what the core philosophy, but I don't think anyone actually agrees that don't touch anything is what is actually happening or what we actually want, right? So absolutely. there are bugs that should absolutely be fixed because they ruin the game experience, right? Like, and they, and you should expect that, right? Like, if if someone finds a bug in vanilla right now that crashes the servers that anyone can exploit to crash the server, right? No one's going to go, no changes. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. They're going to say, fix that bug. Right. So yeah. again, it's like uh, the argument only goes so far, right? So they should absolutely, they should absolutely change things to make the experience better. Now that of course is a very easy thing to say and much harder to do because what that means in, in a detailed or, you know, detailed specific way is a much tougher question. And they don't have a big team to answer that question. Yeah. And they don't have any designers that I know <laughs> of on the team that can answer that question. Right. So this is where things get tricky. Right. So it's not just a matter of should they change certain things, but uh, are they capable of uh, fixing them in a good way? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I think, I think what they've been doing so far, because they don't have game designers on the team um, and don't want to put a lot of effort into, you know, supporting the game, is they've kind of just helped, hid behind the, you know, no changes flag, right? Yeah. In right. cases where they didn't want to put in the work or they don't know how to change it well or don't know what the right answer is. Um, and in some cases where they have changed things, um, I don't think that they've always made the right decision on how to change things. So um, pushing them to change things can also lead to a bad result as well. So it's something else we should be aware of. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my stance on no changes. Yeah. yeah. Cause there's some specific things that I'm worried about and it's um, mm-hmm. the under underperforming of melee compared to casters. Um, the, again, this is all from, this is again, this is all from like what we've learned from private servers. It could be different, but right. right. Um, uh, uh, horde paladins out DPSing alliance paladins due to uh, what's it called? Something in blood, death camp, seal, seal of blood, blood. seal of blood, yeah. seal of blood. Yeah. Um, shamans being insanely popular due to the fact that you can rotate them in groups during the mm-hmm. during the, during combat, bloodlusting the highest DPS group, um, uh, and leather working being right. so powerful with drums. These are the things that I'm kind of worried about, and it's going to turn right. even though world buffs are gone. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm 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 just I'm just scared of. Hmm. Right. I'm not. That's yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, I, 
I've heard that uh, everyone's going to switch to Horde, essentially. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> um, much, right? Yeah. We'll stay alive. <laughs> I've heard the threats. Um, and yeah, it's it's possible, right? It's certainly possible that becomes a reality. Um, it's certainly possible that people discover things on the Alliance side that we hadn't known before in you know some combination of interactions that's present in TBC Classic that isn't present in private servers, you know, that sort of throws us a different direction. Um, some of that is just we have to wait and find out. It's, right. it's probably right, and it will certainly be the meta day one because, you know, we'll, we'll feel like we've got it all figured out. We've had enough time to figure it all out. Um, and so the first drops will probably be using these methods rather than experimental methods. Yeah. Um, and you know how it can be difficult to change the meta once it exists. It takes a pretty brilliant person or group of people to convince the rest of the, you know, world that this is the right way to do it. That's different. So we might have to wait a little while for that. Um, but yeah, ultimately I feel like if it's something that's, creating a bad player experience on both an individual level or in a community level. It's the kind of thing that should be looked at for potential change. So, yeah. Um, you guys are well more versed, um, way more versed in what those, what those specific things are than I am and can speak at a higher level to those things. I'm, you know, well, that was never my gig, but, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it was always just like, yeah, does this create bad atmosphere? a bad environment um, or right. a bad play pattern that I need to worry about. What's interesting is I think like Meldron's more uh, uh, hesitant towards things that I, I'm actually, you know, there's always going to be a meta, right? So there's always going to be, you know, back in class uh, where we have in classic. Now we have a lot of warriors and, you know, in TBC, we're going to have probably more shamans. We're going to have, mm -hmm. you know, things are going to have a lot of people are going to do leather working. I'm okay with those things. I'm a lot more worried about, like you said before, uh, the fact that we are going to maybe have more horde. Like the servers mm -hmm. are already so messed up on, on our part. Like on, we play on Scarum, it's ninety seven percent horde right now. Right, right. Like I'm, I'm wanting to know, like, what are we going to do when we go into TBC? Because I'm very much in the realm. Whereas, like, I started playing. You know, I, I wanted to play on Blizzard servers because I don't want to have to start all over again, right? You know, on its on, right. on a TBC fresh. So I want to continue my character. I think it's the you know I think people would riot if they said. Fresh, you know, TBC servers, your character's gone from classic, all your achievements, everything, you, you lost it. So I want to see, you know, being able to say, you know, transfer my character mm -hmm. to a, right. a, a TBC realm, you know, and then hopefully we could try to figure out this, this, uh, you know, I don't know if they maybe would have to put a cap on how many horde you can have per server, you know, versus how many right. alliance. Um, right. But at the end of the day, like those things, those things that you're worried about, Meldron, I don't think are that big of an issue. Like, yeah, there's going to be shamans. There's going to be you know, people doing this, people doing that. I think the fundamental things we have to worry about are, you know, um, well, the other thing too is we have maybe Kevin has an idea of how to implement it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I would love to hear that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's a tough one. Um, I think the only thing that really works when it comes to population control is uh, depriving players of the game, right? Which means mm. cues essentially. Yes. Um, like it's not enough to give incentives and you know stuff like that, like in-game incentives, right? Because a lot of people care just too much about winning, um, and it's off. It's it's also um, usually more valuable in the end to always be winning than to get fifty percent more from wins on the other side when you're never winning, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, yeah. I think the only thing that it really forces people to go a different way is you can play the game as Alliance or you can not play. Those are your choices, right? Um, and then even then, people are constantly going to be trying to, you know, play uh, play on Horde. They just, in the meantime, you know, they'll have new mods that are like always showing you when it's a good time to try to log in with your Horde guy and while you're playing your Alliance and things like that. So um, it's a tough one to solve because you don't Everyone hates queues, obviously, and no one likes waiting for the game. That especially when it's one that they've paid for, and um, you know they're not they're not interested. Most people aren't interested in the health of the game or the community, right? They're way more interested in their personal enjoyment. So it's tough for them to understand things like queues that are designed to course correct big problems like this at the expense of their personal enjoyment. So. Uh, they're very difficult for for companies to implement. 
because you know the forums just go get lit on fire right yeah what's the most logical way you think we get our characters over do you think it's a fresh start do you think it's transferring do you think it's because i feel like mmos is about like what are all these scarab lords going to do if they don't get their scarab lord title <laughs> or they can't take their thunder right. fury with them you know yeah or their high warlord title mm-hmm. um I'm sorry, are you asking about server transfer or, or transitioning? Like, from I guess, yeah, transition. transition. What's the best way to transition from Classic to TBC? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, I think it's opting in. I think it's the best way. I think, um, which is kind of the opposite of the way it went down. And I think a lot of people disagree with that, what I'm saying. But um, I think a lot of people have demanded vanilla, you know, be re-released as Classic WoW because they want to play classic wow forever. Right. Mm -hmm. And so showing up one day and have your character be sort of TBC lit and then having to do something to undo that, I think is too jarring. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's, um, I think it's the right move to be something that you want to opt in on. Cause I know a lot of people are um, just want to play classic. That's what they fought for. They don't want anything to do with TBC. You know, they just want to live in that world forever. So I'm, I'm kind of in that boat, Kevin, man. If, I, if I'm being honest, I, mean, I like TBC. I'll happily play it. But, you know, right. my dream and call me delusional or whatever would be, is there right. a way to <laughs> build upon? Because I just love the power creep. I, and forgive me if that's a mm-hmm. misusage of the term. But, you know, in classic, you're just like a dude with a stick. You know, you're just a regular right. druid in the ranks of the you know, of the Emerald, you know, Scenarian Circle or whatever the Druid ranks are called. Like, you're so low right. power level, there's not that much space aliens or spaceships or anything like that. It's closer to that Tolkien fantasy. So, like, you know, in my in my mm-hmm. selfish world, I, I would love a way to have, like, a WoW 2 or, or just something to build on this original universe. Right. Um, right. I agree you know, with that. As opposed yeah, you want an alternate. You want an alternate universe that mm-hmm. um, sprouts from classic or from vanilla. Yeah, and stays on that same wavelength, you know, but I don't know. It's right, right. Never gonna happen, no, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. You know, when people ask me all the time if I prefer TBC to Classic, um, and it's it's tough, and I, I think Classic wins out just barely, um, despite the fact that I think, like I was agreeing with Def Camp earlier when he said the classes and the specs were all in a great place, because I think I really hit my stride mm. in the class and spec design being a lot more well-rounded, in terms of um, you know people playing and enjoying and getting invited to the raids and all that stuff um, in TBC, right? So, uh, but there are a lot of other places where the game I think got you know incrementally worse. So, I think T- uh, Classic barely wins out for me. But there's yeah, there's a lot of good things I like in TBC. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to agree with you, Cargos, like it's just so grounded. It's so. It feels so, the scope of it feels so right, you know, like just that slow, steady progression from one to, you know, 60 uber geared max, you know, superhero (laughs) Um, just feels right. And then TBC, we, we did some different things that, like you were saying, the power progression and the power creep, just, we just kind of released the hounds and things got crazy from there. So, and nowadays, of course, you can, you, you see exactly what you'd expect, you know, it's like, we got to do another number squish. We, you know, people are swinging their sword for 5 million damage with an auto attack. You know, it's like, what is going on? You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <that's> so awkward. <laughs> right? I feel like I'm this like Warhammer 40 K battleship, you know, <laughs> firing a broadside, you know, <laughs> volley at somebody rather than a guy swinging a sword. I wonder what are your thoughts on uh, normal versus heroic mode dungeons, for example, or raids later on. Um, yeah, it's a, I, I know people that would, would say it's a necessary evil, right? Like the, the reason for that is, to take a dungeon that's very difficult and time consuming to make from a, um, interior designer and, uh, multiply it into additional content, right? Oh, we get to reuse the same assets multiple times, which gives people two, three times the content, right? Um, that's good for us because, you know, they consume content so fast. Right. But I think, um, I think there's a tipping point on dungeons where, um, you enjoy it the first X number of times and then your enjoyment goes severely down, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And it starts to feel really grindy. So I don't think those done that, that format helps with that. And so what you're adding 
the content that you're adding is actually worse, right? Because it's like, yeah, people enjoyed the first 10 runs of a dungeon. And obviously this varies depending on who you are, but um, that second 10 isn't really adding content. It's adding bad content or grindy content or boring content. Yeah, it's a little bit harder, but um, in terms of like atmosphere and the things you're fighting and, you know, stuff like that, it's all kind of getting kind of boring, right? So, um, and I've always been in the, in the position of, you know, create as much quality content as you can. And then when it runs out, it runs out. And it's like, okay, time for you yeah. guys to play other games at worst or at best, you know, create your own modes for having fun. Just interact with each other, do crazy things, run yeah. meme specs, you know, like go Hardcore. socialize, go, yeah. <laughs> you know, go do crazy stuff, stuff that, you know, like look at all the machinima that was, that was created back in the day. Right. Like, um, so much of that is so good. Like, and that's because you're free to do that because you're out of content, right? When there's always more content to do, there's always a way to get your item score up higher. You're, you're, you're tied to that or a lot of players are tied to that and they don't even think about having fun and um, creating fun experiences and doing other things until they're past that moment. Right. So um, ultimately I think the, the hardcore modes and stuff like that are uh, not a great game design model. And also just from, again, a thematic standpoint of like, it's weird that, um, people go to a place and it's not just the place, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you think about BRD, that's just the place. You you see it for the first time. You dream about getting there someday. At some point you walk in, it's totally rough. You know, you have a great time. Eventually you crush it. You think about it in the past tense. You're excited to go there with a different class maybe, but it isn't like, oh, and now we get to do hard mode and run it back. You know, like it's just BRD, right? It, it's a place that fits within the world. It's a, it's a living part of the world and it's exactly what it's supposed to be and nothing else. It's not a game mechanism. It's a world mechanism as well. So, um, it's It's it's, it's important for things. It's important for, you know, everything to fit in, in that sense. Right. Again, not just a game construct, but a world construct, a social construct. Like these are the, the three pillars I talk about all the time of like how MMO should be designed in my opinion. Mm. So, well, Kevin, I got to say, I, I 100% agree with you with the opt-in uh, uh, version for, for TBC. I think that is the most logical, that is the most uh, fair. And I think, like, you know, there's a lot of people, like you said, who are going to want to continue to play classic, to do these things. And, you know, whether they, they continue at a, at a, at a post nax or, I don't know, refresh the servers, whatever, I think being able to opt in and say hey like i want to i want to transfer my character to this tbc server and continue there right. but my question is you know well, before you ask your question yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe can we afterwards guys can we look at def camp's parses because he's only getting 100 percent agreement with me i think we can maybe squeeze <laughs> a little bit more out of him <laughs> hey, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got pretty good parses all right we're all okay uh, 90, 99 parses all right so all right you're uh, a healer. <laughs> i'm a healer yeah yeah, yeah. So, so my question is, you know, with vanilla, we didn't have the, the reason why they said, you know, we're going to start at 1.12. We didn't have all the basis information. Obviously, it would take more time, cost a lot more money. But we have, they have a lot of this information for TBC. You know, so I would think it would be pretty cool to say, let's start from a 2.1 standard where, you know, things are how they were at 2.1, the talent systems, this and the other. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe play the game as it was at 2.1. Continue, you know, without the bugs, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have the bugs. But, like, you know, back when Kara first came out, the gear was, you know, crap. And then, like, it wasn't crap, but it was, you know, revamped. And then the Kara gear became, like, really good. And it helped people mm-hmm. to catch up in the game. So what you're doing essentially is making the game just a little bit more difficult because you know you're you're playing the game as it was at 2.1 the gear is going to be less powerful your talents mm-hmm. might be a little bit different and then you know continuing over over the time till we get to the 2.4.3 um you know talent base and and the gear itemization and stuff like that i mean would that be feasible or is it just going to cost too much money or I, you know i don't uh i i do think it's Unfortunately, I think it's an unrealistic expectation from the classic team. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I love the idea. Like, and that's, I think what we all want at the end of the day is just yeah. more, more content, something new to sink our teeth into and try to figure out. And again, like right. go through that process of breaking down this game and squeezing every little, you know, yeah. ounce of joy we can out of it. Right. Um, and we're still doing that to some extent, but it is 15 year old game that we know a ton about. So it's harder to find those kernels. Right. But um, we're still doing a pretty good job. And obviously, you know, with the hardcore stuff, that's been amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Perfect example of us squeezing even more joy out of this thing. Um, but and ultimately we want, yeah, just new stuff. But um, if you were to talk about um, what does the retail team want? Like the only team at Blizzard that's working on new content, I think they would say they want everyone playing retail and having a blast, right? That would be the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, retail is a, a long way from what we want from a gaming experience, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, we're playing classic. Um, and so that ask is huge for us, right? Because we're yeah. just, we're not on the same page. But um, yeah, so I, that's why I, I fear that it's unrealistic to expect yeah. that the only team that's actively working on new stuff is they're working on a game that they want everyone to fall in love with, including us. Right. And they want us back in that camp, even though we're like, we're good. (laughs) Um, Can you, can you maybe make more for us? Right. (laughs) Uh, But uh, yeah, it's like, um, I, I'm sad that they can't recognize what a tremendous market they have right now. And I think this market's over time is going to get more vocal, right? As we go, because right now we're, you know, we were massively satisfied by classic coming out. We're pretty satisfied, you know, with each new patch, we're probably going to be pretty excited for TBC when it comes out, you know, for a while and, you know, sedated again. Right. (laughs) And then maybe wrath, right. Depending, but you know, each new expansion is going to like, you know, satisfy us less and less. We're certainly not really going to be asking for Cata that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but then after, after the, you know, patches for wrath kind of dry up, what are we going to do then? Right. When are we going to start screaming then? Right. We're going to be like, Hey, you have this 2 million people or so, let's say. And we're like, how about something for us? We're actually potentially a bigger audience than the, than the audience that you're making a fresh game for so maybe maybe pay attention to us right like how about yeah. we get something a little something you know for the effort now now this is something yeah. that 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 i get a little people have been typing this in the chat people have been asking they say that you know kevin kevin doesn't play that much you know classic on stream or something like that so i you know mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to see you know know exactly where your head is at you know with regard to right. current blizzard current wow if you are happy if you are sad mm-hmm. you know like and a part of me wants to ask you know once we get to that that line where you know let's mm-hmm. say we go through bc and wrath and now it's like what next what's next and i've i've never been a classic plus guy right i've, I've always I, right. I i like what you've made already and i could play this mm-hmm. until i am no longer breathing like i can find fun okay. ways to enjoy right. it and just immerse myself and for all the reasons i said before but you know do right. you have any interest at all in you know a leading or participating or doing any kind of classic plus or, or some sort of you know addition to this world in that same classic vein because i don't think any you know there'd be any anybody else in the world people would want to trust doing that you know since you basically made the original right right um yeah I, i'm like you like i'd love to see um, some new content within the classic philosophies, within the vanilla philosophies, right? Um, and, you know, one of the reasons I'm not playing right now, I maxed my Orc Shaman um, at 60, Congrats. but I've never, I've never been much of a raider, right? So once once I got to 60, I ran some dungeons, but, um, and I was on Fair Lena, which um, I really wanted to be on Fair Lena, but it, it was a mistake for me yeah. because I just don't play at that rate, you know? Like, I think that's a hardcore rate server, right? Like everyone is turboing on that server. So, um, I'd probably have more fun on a slower pace server, but it, it, you know, you, uh, you get a lot of reports from a lot of the servers that a lot of them are full of, you know, hardcore raiders and that's all they do. And, you know, meta slaves and that kind of thing. And I know that's not true. Um, 
but uh, I have yet to find, you know, the right server. So, but uh, I also just love games. And so I can't, I, I, there's too many games I want to play that are really good that I get distracted, you know, by playing. So, uh, but I do intend to go back and play more uh, classic as an Alliance character. And then I'll certainly play TBC when it comes out. Um, but uh, to answer the other side of your question, would I be interested in like, pushing classic plus content i i just can't imagine them reaching out to me um and it would also require a pretty special offer because um one of the reasons i left the company was because work and life balance were out of whack so you know i got my three girls i got to take care of and i need a lot of life balance right and um the industry is not well known for work life balance (laughs) so it would require a pretty special you know offer but um and plus i think uh one of their finance guys got like a a 15 mil signing bonus so i that oh, yeah. was back that was a year ago i feel like i'd had to ask for like a 20 mil just you know i can't you deserve it you deserve it yeah. 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 but i just don't I, know I, if they'd go for it but you know, I, i'd feel I, weird I, not asking you nailed the head on the uh you, whatever the saying is earlier with the trust thing right the, the thing is i don't and I think a lot of people don't have the trust in the current, you mm-hmm. know, game developers right now to be able yeah. to make something a lot of it like classic, you know, and and, and that's the thing is like Kevin, right. we trusted you guys, and you guys delivered, and mm-hmm. and it's so different now that yeah, I yeah. could never trust uh, someone making it unless they brought you back and everyone else back, and to 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 create that magic again right you know right. and and that's where it comes down to for me i don't want them to ruin the legacy that we have right right you know? yeah it'd be really interesting um but yeah it's like i don't think now is the right time to be asking for classic plus if i'm honest you know because if it were like be like yeah it's just a it's a second project for you know the current retail team to work on um i think the the leadership at the very least like because I know a fair number of people that are still working on the team that they right. know, they know some of the old philosophies, and they appreciate them. But um, uh, they may not be in a position to steer the game that way. But the, yeah. the current leadership of retail is—they're just on a different page, right? So yeah, um, it's not a good time for them to be making the thing that we ultimately want to see. So they might get there, you know. Like I th- hopefully they're learning a lot from classic, and you know they certainly. Um, have been using some of the words that we want to hear, which is, mm-hmm. oh yeah, we're going to start doing things more like classic. But I haven't heard very much specifically, you know, outside of covenants, I haven't heard a lot of things. Like I think Torghast is a giant step towards more of the same, yeah. you know, from retail. I think that's going to be a huge disaster. Um, <laughs> and there's just a fair bit of other things. Like I haven't like heard any specifics that are telling me. You know, like, oh, they're heading back towards the classic way, you know, so, um, yeah, we just have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how feasible it is, but <clears throat> what I would really dig a lot is an interview of, like, you with Ian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be... I cannot imagine he would accept. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that <laughs> Uh, yeah. you can see, see the title Kevin Jordan destroys right. Ian Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have to go through intermediators like intermediaries like preach or something you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ask, ask Ian this <laughs> and then Ian comes back through that we'll tell Kevin this <laughs> he, might, he might be watching right now dude he might be watching All right, right. Um, <laughs> The, uh, Rachel be so, so and- the, the real <laughs> elephant in the room for me, Kevin, this is something I've been wondering for 15 years, is um, Will you marry who, me? who made the lava in Classic WoW? Because that's the one change that I always wish I could change. Because it was like, you know how the lava is like, it was only a couple... I love the world so much, you know? But mm-hmm. it, it always, like, I saw the lava... And it right. kind of like took me out of my immersion because it was it was like two pixels in the in the in like oh, right. and stuff. Yeah, um, uh, I don't I don't know, but we yeah the water did get a, li- a lot better over time, right? The lava, uh, the, the water, no, I was the water, yeah, just, just water too. But um, yeah, we struggled with you know basically water and lava are essentially the same thing. Um, <laughs> this one's a lot hotter. <laughs> yeah. yeah <right. laughs> Um, in terms of like mechanically or from a programmer standpoint, but right. uh, yeah, I don't remember specifically, but uh, yeah, we had a guy, and that's all he did was work on water, and then he went on to work on weather, and that's all he did was weather. So 
we did have like it, it's crazy to think about you know one programmer being responsible for one thing you know for so long on the game right but there were a few instances of that elevators was another you know the boats and elevators mm, things that move yeah. while players aren't you know oh, i've died so many times um, oh, yeah the, i mean there were still bugs right tons of them but um yeah we had a guy and that's mostly what he did like this whole time on wow was just work on that stuff right like <laughs> yeah so tim, Trus- tim truesdale yeah that's uh <laughs> He did the water and weather, yeah, but uh, yeah, he's an amazing dude. Super wow. nice. So I have one more TBC question. I'm sorry to go back to like a serious question or whatever, but I just wanted to say like I've been studying the talent systems for TBC in preparation, and how did you bottle lightning twice? I, th- I feel like you've you <laughs> some, you somehow increased balance, but also increased identity. I don't know how right. that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? uh, it was always just the the plan, like. Again, I I probably was just unswayed by, you know, like I talk, I joke about having survived the class forums, right? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Because of all the hate there. But um, a lot of times I was just unswayed. I think, I just think I had the right amount of ego to know what I wanted to do with it. And I didn't want to turn it into, you know, like just a raid gamers paradise, right? Um, and a lot of the, it's interesting because a lot of the questions people ask me are like, did you intend for Shadow Priest to be the PvP spec? Did you intend for Holy to be the raid spec? Did you, in- you know, like, it's always about intention, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, and I, I never had intentions in terms of like that kind of stuff. I never intended for you to play any particular way. I never intended for you to sort of solve the puzzle that was in my brain you know, to be the best at something. My intention was always just to give you lots of cool stuff, lots of cool interactions that were thematically appropriate, made you feel powerful and good and fun and tied in with all the other things that you were trying to be, you know, as a certain class. And then I left it to you to what you were going to do with it, you know, like, so for me, it was kind of, that was the sandbox experience I was creating was just, dumping out a bunch of awesome toys and then you guys go figure out how to build your your masterpiece of gameplay essentially so that was always my approach um and i think a lot of designers nowadays just take a different approach they're like no this is going to be the pvp spec this is going to be the Mm -hmm. um it's going to be the raid spec this is going to be you know once they figure out what i've intended then they're done you know but Again, you're taking away the process from the players, and I think that's um, it's really damaging to the experience. I just had a light bulb moment, like a uh, <laughs> like when you were talking right there. It just like a like a clear eureka, eureka. So, Kevin, one of the on, players, biggest gamers play in the dark. Turn that light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, one of the one of the biggest like you saying that is like classic is so much about. And vanilla and, and, and TBC, you giving us the choices, right? Mm-hmm. It's like here's here's a here's uh, here's a here's a, a, a you know a piece of paper. You fill in the rest. And retail right. so much like this is what you have to do. And and mm-hmm. the thing I hate so much about retail, if a new player tries to go into retail, wow, well, it's mm-hmm. like oh look, we have this over here. We have this. We have it's so confusing. It's like you have to do this. There's the corruption system. There's this system. There's that system. There's this system. Right. You have to do it like this. You have to do it like that. You have to do it like this. <laughs> Classic WoW is pure. It's simplistic. Right. It's, yeah. it's putting and the you, ball in your court. If you if you wonder why, like why is Minecraft so popular, right? It's just Legos online essentially, right? Like, mm-hmm. and, and you can see parallels in the rest of the in other industries, right? Like back in the day when I played with Legos, it was just a big pile of blocks and they had different colors right so to me to make whatever now you come with all the pieces to make a star wars death star and a giant Mm. book and show you how to do it right yeah so all you're doing is going through the motions right it's like yeah i love death stars too but i would be way more proud of a death star if i made one out of this pile of bricks that you know had you know where there was no intent you know like that experience is just so much better um than it is just kind of doing what you're told and following along, you know, like again, you end up with an amazing death star and that's cool, I guess, but Mm -hmm. you remember the process, you know, of trying to figure out how to make a death star with a pile of bricks a lot better. It's a way more memorable experience. So 
It's so that's pretty. what I, I. That's what I translate into game design. <laughs> I've been thinking so much about why I dislike the the retail class design, and I know I don't like the rotations and all the procs and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But now you put it like that, it makes so much so much sense, and yeah. I really hope they. Uh, if 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 even for some specs they they go back to uh, original design and let, let us decide if do I want to play like a, a rotation mm-hmm. predefined rotation then I can probably go fire but if I can, if I if I want to try it myself let me try frost or or arcane for example something like that right, I don't know right. some kind of hybrid style would yeah. be maybe a good idea yeah I think ultimately you know the best game designs for me have always been. Ones where they, yeah, they meet me halfway. Here are the tools. Get creative. You know, it's up to me to get creative and experiment. And that's when I, that's when I come alive. You know, it challenges a lot of different parts of me, and that's what gets the juices flowing, right? Hmm. Wow. So there's a there's a question that's been lingering in the chat. People have been uh, spamming it and making their you know, and fighting for it. And I'm I'm pretty curious about this mm-hmm. too. Um, just to set the record okay. straight here. So how close are we to you know vanilla uh, Karazhan in in classic? And uh, you know just speaking on that whole underground crypt area within Karazhan, was there any plan for that? Maybe there wasn't a plan for it. You know, and I'm sure you, you've answered this a bazillion times, but uh, people are profoundly curious. Right. Uh, okay, so Karazhan, you know, Karazhan, uh, that was a John Stats thing as well. Uh, he was one of the one of the very early team members, and uh, he was on the team before I was, and the team was even pretty small uh, before I was on it. But uh, there's a lot of uh, asset creators that don't always know what they're supposed to be working on. Like sometimes the game design is waiting to flesh out, you know, sometimes programmers aren't ready with the tools. And so, um, you know, that, that can like put various content creators like John stats in a place where they're just like, I don't know what to be doing. I don't have a specific goal. So they just start tinkering. They start making stuff. Mm. And that's an example of him just tinkering and making things. And he's trying to come at the problem from the other, you know, the other way. Like the, the designers are all in their heads. What should a dungeon look like? What should it feel like? How many people should be running around in it? Because we, we like hadn't even designed uh, what the max group size was by then, right? And so that that's an important consideration when you think about how big to make a dungeon. How, how are the hallways? How are the doors? You know, where the fights take place? Because if there's 10, 10 people in a group versus three people in a group, you build it very differently, right? So... Um, that was him just kind of experimenting and showing examples of what things could look like and getting us to talk about game design in relation to this is a stairway, this is a hallway, this is a big room for a fight, you know, things like that. So, and some of that stuff, um, gets attached to assets, right. That end up going in the game and because they look amazing, but don't actually have a specified purpose. Right. And then of course players find them. Right. So, and then, you know, the rumor mills start <laughs> grinding, you know, start going to work. Um, so uh, I don't know exactly when Karazhan is going to get in there, obviously, because I'm not, you know, part of the project. But, um, yeah, Karazhan is a pretty memorable place, pretty special place in a lot of our minds. Um, and I'm excited to see, you know, us be able to dive into there again. But, yeah, yeah that. That specific place you're talking about, the mm-hmm. the Hall of Underground Swimmers or Sinners, Underwater Sinners, what's it called? Yeah, from, uh, uh, the Crypts. Yeah, um, uh, Sinner sounds right. Something Sinner. I think some yeah. oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the dead guys are down there, right? Like floating upside yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 hanging. From that's the, yeah. A, yeah, that's yeah. a reference to Big Trouble in Little China. You know, when they go. Oh, the oh yeah. yeah. If I remember, I remember right. uh, John told us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so that's what you know. He was just making stuff, and he thought that'd be cool, and. I, I, I sorry to keep asking you, but I, you just brought up another question. Do you feel like retail's got progressively less dark? I feel like classic had a yeah. darkness. Oh okay. yeah, I was, yeah. I was yeah. just told by my because we were talking about the day night cycle uh, yeah. and it being twenty four yeah. hour. That was another big contentious thing on the team um, was how long to make the day night cycle. And Alan and have pitched twenty four hour because he wanted it to feel like a real world. You know, because mm-hmm. again. It's not just a place you, it's not just a game you play. This is a place you live, right? You spend a lot of your time here. It should feel like a real world, including, 
the time of day. So if you get up in the morning to play, you get to see a sunrise, you know, like, yeah, just like you would. And so, again, just everything reinforcing that sense of this is a part of your life, not just a game. Right. Um, but it was very contentious. And uh, some of the things people worried about was always playing in the dark, you know, but it was never our intention to diminish gameplay. It was just an artistic difference, right? So mm-hmm. the world got very blue, right? So if you go to Duskwood at night, it's very darkish, but it's blue, but you can still see. You know, like, you don't, it's not hard to, it's not like Dark Souls, you know, um, yeah. dark where you have to bring a torch, right? So, but uh, people complained about that apparently. And <laughs> I think retail eventually removed any change other than the skybox <laughs> to the yeah, lighting. A lot, of, yeah. A lot yeah. of like the heavy oh. weather systems as well. Like the, you know, people right. were complaining of it. Yeah, couldn't right. see right. in the Rocky basin. And mm-hmm. right. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was heartbroken that somebody in my chat told me. It has gotten lighter. Mission. Essentially. <laughs> I think I remember on, uh, on new year that there was fireworks in, in storm. Mm. Is that, is that right? Or is it something I wrongly remember? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay. Could have been player yeah. create. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Fireworks in the game. <laughs> if, Kevin, if, I'm just. Oh, sorry. sorry go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. I mean, do, do you have moments? Uh, and feel free to just say like, no, you know, I don't have these moments. But is there a lot of stuff that just worked out like really randomly to be like super brilliant? You know, like I mean, I I, I look at the itemization in Classic Wow. I look at. <laughs> You know the way defense works, weapon skill works, and how all right. the, the items have have all these different stats on them. And I just think to myself, did they really have the foresight to feel like 15 years from now people are going to be digesting all these different stat lines in literally nine million right. different ways? And look at the it makes stat weights for crit and hit, and then like look at doing these weird re- like skull of impending doom. Like was that meant to be some low key sleeper cell green item that was going to be used in like high level PvP? Like there's this huge just rain cloud. I mean the, the, all that stuff. I'm just dying to know. Like or was it the type of thing where you're like yeah we planned it all out? Yo. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned Sleeper Cell because if you've ever equipped a Skull of Impending Doom, you've actually sent your banking information directly to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got, 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 I knew I was losing money somehow. <laughs> and now you're you know what, Kevin? You can keep it. Keep <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, some of it was intentional, right? Obviously, there's a ton of emerging because, again, you guys are the greatest content. So you're always going to do things that we never expected. Um, but again, that the intent was to give you amazing tools that were super varied, that were experimental for you to find a use for. You know, like um, the item designer during Vanilla, and they would John Yu, would come to me probably once a week and ask me, "Are you sure I'm supposed to be putting?" all these different attributes on these items. Cause it just seems like everyone's going to think my items are trash. If you put agility and spirit on them, you know, like I'm like, yeah, do it. <laughs> 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 but he would question it all. And he was kind of a hardcore gamer. Right. So mm-hmm. he had that sort of like, Oh man, I feel really bad about this. Right. <laughs> and sure enough, a lot of people called a fair number of his items, total trash. Right. Like, but at the end of the day, what it created was this huge textured canvas for you yeah. guys to dive in and either find a use for or discard as garbage or find out his best in slot or whatever it was, like the whole range, you know? Wow. And again, that's part of the process of you guys getting your hands dirty, rolling up your sleeves, right? And putting in the work to tell us what's good and what's bad. It's just up to us to provide you a big enough canvas. Right. And so now, nowadays, like everything's so optimized that it's like, they're trying to limit those responses of this item's trash, but they've also removed you from the process. Cause it's like, yeah, this item is automatically changing attributes depending on the back I'm playing. And you know, there's, there's like no bad items. Therefore there's really no good items because they're all the same, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's got higher item score, just equip it. You're probably right. You know, yeah. Uh, so, again, the intent was just to give you a play space that was huge and experimental, and let you guys, you know, figure out how that, to do it. That is amazing, amazing to hear. I mean, I, I hoped it was the case that you would say that, right? Because it's the type of thing that 
um, you guys didn't know exactly what you were creating potentially. Like you came up with all this cool stuff and you were like, let's let the players figure it out. And the most amazing right. thing is, like I said before, this game hasn't crumbled under the weight of 15 years of technology. Mm -hmm. Like it still holds up. It still has a backbone. I mean, we've done everything. Yeah. We've done our damnedest to break it, you know, and right. I think the thing that breaks it more than anything else, just my personal opinion is the whole multi-boxing thing. It makes me feel like you have multiple lives you know like but but yeah, you know yeah. just the the mage farms like that stuff can come close to kind of breaking it but it doesn't fully snap the spine of the world of this 15 year old game yeah. where you created all mm -hmm. of these random things the game still has integrity and it's still the most glorious sandbox i've ever seen and now we're making our own fun with it and all this type of stuff so it just blows me yeah. away you want to hear the dark side of this whole thing is that mm -hmm. john Yu was actually replaced in his position because people thought internally that he did a bad job with the items really? because he oh, was no. doing what I told him to do essentially, which is to make these crazy items that are sometimes bad and sometimes good. Right. Oh, man. Uh, it's crazy to think like he is an unsung hero, right? Of, yeah, he is. Of he classic is. Wow. Right. Oh, of, of, of vanilla. Wow. Because people didn't appreciate the fact that, you know, he made items so amazing. And it's like, now we appreciate it. But at yeah. the time, like many of you know, the people playing the game, they were like, who would make this item? This item is garbage, right? Yeah. Not understanding the bigger picture, right? Of It's important that there are bad items so that it can create a, a variance between good and bad, right? So um, pretty rough, you know? Rough, I think but, so. I think, yeah. I just wanted to take a moment, Melron, just like, uh, like, you know, 20 years ago, a group of guys came together with a single vision, right, to create this MMO. <laughs> and, you know, you had single, three, single vision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, you know what I mean? To have this vision to create this MMO. You know, 20 years ago, you had people, you know, like yourself, Kevin, you know, working together, doing these things. Like, you know, like you, like you said, you know, you have... You know, each individual person working on these, you know, on the on the classes, on on the, on the items, and all these little things came together, just mm -hmm. absolutely perfectly. It, the magic, what you of what you guys created, the mm -hmm. for me the best game of all time. I have right. never. The only thing I can come close to is like, you know, that first time when I ever, you know, it. it, it no other game. I, I, I let me just say this. I match up every other game to WoW. Nothing ever comes close, right? I always come back to WoW. I always come back to Classic. I always come back to this. What you right. guys did and how you did this, it's still just, it boggles my mind. I just want to take a second to say, like, how absolutely amazed and just thankful I am that you guys did this. Changed so much, of, so many of our lives. And it's just, it's to put yourself back there. 20 years ago, like I wish I could just be a fly on the wall and just see <laughs> some of that, what you guys did. I mean, did you guys have any idea that this was going to be like this huge, amazing, you know, game or like were you guys like, it's just, I can't, I can't even like fathom. I mean, like what, what it, it was to be part shattered? of it. Is Def Cam gushing a little bit? Is it just me? Anyone else gush? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. He's gushing. gushing. He's gushing yeah. for yeah. sure. I am. Um, I'm just. <laughs> we always play this ambience in the background, yeah. Kevin. We always play like whenever we do these GMAs, we just play these zones. Mm -hmm. But it's hitting different right. today for me because the person oh, yeah. who yeah. played just such a gigantic role in making what I'm literally seeing behind you is is just sitting. Is, I mean, being able and, to put yeah. the pieces together is it's touching, man. Yeah. So talk about yeah. so talk about some more of the unsung heroes, right? Like I mentioned, John Yu, and um, but you're right in that. Like I, I know we tend to we tend to think there's one person responsible, right? A lot of times for things, right? Like every time something goes bad with retail, it's like, Oh, that Ian, you know, like we blame him. And if something goes right, you know, like, and so obviously I'm here and I'm taking a lot of the brunt of not the brunt, but I'm taking a lot of the praise, but I want to diffuse it a little bit because um, like you said, an amazing team came together at a perfect time in Blizzard's history. And there was so much about that environment and the people involved and uh, it, it, it was a perfect storm in the sense of, um, you know, Mike Morheim worked to create an environment that was built around being a design-led company, right? Which a lot of companies are not design-led, but Blizzard was back in the day. A lot of people worry about, um, you know, suits being in charge, the money men, the bean counters, right? <laughs> and they're responsible for all the crappy decisions. But I can tell you, 
it was a design game design led company back then, right? Which is a tremendous uh, accomplishment, you know, from Mike Morheim. Um, Alan Adham created an environment where each of us was felt like we were participating, right? So everyone on the team and a lot of people, the company got their say and, you know, we didn't always agree and we didn't always implement, but people felt like they could contribute and um, there were no bad ideas, right? Like in terms of, you know, just speak up, right? Like obviously there were bad ideas in reality, but um, (laughs) um, speak up, right? Like another thing that, you know, Alan Adham did um, was he kept, he kept us all uh, focused on the job at hand and not worrying about things. He used to get us, uh, he used to talk to the money men and get us retention bonuses before the game was out so that we wouldn't consider leaving right before while we were in this long stretch of years and years of not making any money from the game we were working on. Right. (laughs) Um, He would get us uh, retention bonuses before the game came out. Right. Which is, is kind of unheard of. Right. When you think about today's place. Right. So he went and convinced people, you know, that we should be paid money before our thing came out. So, um, Like there's just so many things that came together so perfectly. Um, and there's so many amazing people involved in this project. Right. And I was a part of that. Right. But, um, I'm still kind of amazed as well as the number of people that got, you know, pulled into this project in such an amazing way and in the environment that allowed for all this amazing creativity to come forward. And, um, it wasn't always the best of times, you know, that we had a lot of low morale moments on the team, but, uh, we got through it and yeah, and I'll never forget. And I'll always believe this accomplishment was pretty amazing. So yeah, so, I, yeah. I appreciate wow. you guys saying that. And, and I, I feel it the same way in a lot of the ways you do. So thank yeah, you. Can't, can't thank you enough. Um, yeah. I'm not technically, I'm not a very religious person, but I do feel like that, you know, uh, we're all put here either. We've, we've created ourselves. Um, purpose or that purpose is given to us by something. But I think that, you know, for you, like you said, you have, you have family, you're, you're a husband and, and a father and, you know, that's, that's purpose. But, you know, and I think another purpose is, is this game, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess my question to you is, have you ever thought about getting back on the horse? Right. Would you ever do this, would you ever do this again? Because like, I have to say the world needs you, Kevin, but the world needs you, Kevin. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. But the legacy will always be there is what, what is it? It will always happening. be there. But like, yeah. but Kevin brought up a good point earlier. Like what happens after Wrath, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. So obviously under the right circumstances, I would absolutely get back on the horse. Um, it's tricky though. It's obviously tricky with the game industry, the way it is. Uh, not only from like a financial standpoint, market standpoint, but also just like, the genre, uh, the, the industry right now is struggling to be creative. We're all doing kind of the safe bets, you know, across the industry. Oh, another battle, battle royale, you know, like mm-hmm. we're doing a lot of that kind of design, right? So it, it'll swing back. The pendulum will definitely swing back. Um, you can see that from like Ashes of Creation. They're trying to push the pendulum back by doing wild things, right? Yeah. Um, and that's good. That's good for the whole industry to see, you know, different things. Um, but that's also another thing I try to do with my Twitch channel is just influence, you know, game design and game philosophy and game theory. Uh, that's a, one of the reasons I'm here today, right? Is like yeah. some of you guys, you know, like I, I want to say you guys have learned a few things about how we thought about things back in the day, right? Absolutely. And, and you guys have been students of this game for 15 years. <laughs> and yet some of this stuff is like, wow, I never thought of it like that before. Right. Um, and so it's, uh, it, it's also kind of one of those sad things when like, I, like I joked earlier about not writing this stuff down. Um, design philosophy is one of those really tricky things. It turns out because for me, it was like, if, if someone were to look at wow and why it was successful and they were a game designer, I would expect them to be able to pick it apart and say, well, this is why, um, but it turns out that's a much harder job than I imagined it would be. Um, whereas if you like, if you look at the art, like a new artist comes into the World of Warcraft team and he, he says, well, how do you do things around here? And you say, well, go look at the game, right? The game is a living embodiment of how we do things around here, right? Mm-hmm. But the design is, is harder to, you can't just say, 
we'll go look at the go play the game and you'll see how we do things around here you know like it's it's way more nuanced than that and and i'm probably underselling the craftsmanship that goes into art you know but i feel like you understand the style you understand the artistic qualities and the approaches you take with the art a lot more readily than you do the design philosophy and and the design strategy and and all the things right so that's what what i joke about i'm sad i didn't write it down but um that's what I'm kind of doing with my channel. That's what I'm kind of trying to do here is, is expose some of the reasons and the whys um, of how we got World of Warcraft to the place it was and why some of the things work so well. Like, again, that the talk about the factions, you know, and people's sense of identity connecting to Alliance versus Horde. That's a real thing that happened. And some of that was unexpected, right? Like, naturally, I, I knew that people would love to have someone to smash, right? <laughs> but beyond that, like, I never expected nerds to put their stickers of their nerddom on their cars, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. are you kidding me? Like, you would out yourself like that? <laughs> <laughs> so you're a gamer, you know? <laughs> like, so, obviously, some other stuff, you know, came to the fore, right? And um, yeah. surprised me, but, yeah, it's... Uh, but yeah, I wish, I wish, like, I feel like there's a disconnect, you know, between the conversations we were having back in the day, um, you know, internally and why people think WoW was a success, you know, because it's not just about a brilliant raid game, you know, it's not just about item score progression, right? That's just scratching the surface. That's what every other game does, you know, and you don't care about those other games, even though they have raid progression and item score going up and you have to get into why, why do you guys care about this game versus every other game that offers those things? And so, um, those are the questions and I have some of the answers, but I wish, uh, the reason, you know, the reasons were more widely known. But so the fact that you still stream and that what you're doing and like, you don't see many developers, uh, you know, whether they're past developers, present, whatever, streaming right. and like you know i think that is what you're doing there is 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 exactly what we need to is like you're bringing this out in the open you're you're putting yourself available so that we can talk to you and and right. i mean i gotta thank you again for that because like you know you don't see many developers doing that mm. like right, at right. all and there um, are some yeah 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 there are some but books, it's, yeah. like you know i love books like john stats book that right kind of exposes yeah. and like it's another thing it's just amazing to read and like yeah it's uh it's interesting. Yeah. And I get to do it from the safety of not currently being on a project that you guys love. Like the conversation would be so different if I were mm. currently working at Blizzard, right? <laughs> like, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we talked earlier about, you know, the, the, the distance between community and developer, right? Like this is the safe way to do it, right? But uh, right. yeah, yeah, it could, be, I mean, it could be harmful when it's actually for real on a person that's working on a live game. The trust has been severed uh, between player and Blizzard for a lot of people, but I mean, I do think it'd be a good look if they, you know, hired back one of the OGs. I mean, not to say... Right, I mean, right. I, I'm happy with what we have right now. I mean, whether it's private server or real classic, like, the world you created is absolutely, like, you know, breathtaking. Mm -hmm. I admit, I, I, can, I can play forever. Um, right. So, guys, do you guys have one final question each, perhaps? We've been taking up so much of this <clears throat> of this man's time. Um, Def Camp doing Melderon. I know people in the chat are dying to hear your TLDR thoughts on Ashes of Creation. That's something that I'm not personally mm -hmm. looking forward to that much. So I'm not trying to like lead the passer here. Like that's something that I saw and I was kind of like, mm -hmm. meh. But um, well, I can answer my... that one quickly with just steering people to my YouTube channel. Um, yes, it, please. please I, yeah, I, made a whole video. Video. I made a whole video about Ashes of Creation. It's about oh, an hour yeah. and a half. And I reviewed or reacted to Lazy Peon's video about Ashes of Creation. Mm. So there's. Um, there's your TLDR. Okay. And this, this oh, Twitch is it. good. Watch it. It's really and nice. The, the Twitch is but, Kevin Jordan. Make sure to check that out too. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't really have a question anymore. I, all I can say is this: this has been the most amazing GMA or interview or whatever we ever had or I ever had. It's amazing to think that we actually just talked with someone. <laughs> was one of the original designers of the game we, we talk right. about and play for so long. That's, the sausage that's, maker. That in itself is amazing. <laughs> so all I want to say really is uh, just thank you for making yeah. this game. It's, it's yes, been my pleasure amazing. and thank you very much for reaching out to Dan. Yeah, I would have oh, never yeah. I'm so happy I did. 
Yeah. I know. Thank you, dear Dane. I too would like to trade in my question for a thank you, um, <laughs> Kevin. I I gotta say that um, I first and foremost, like I, I I don't think I can put into words how much of what you've done has not only helped me um, with my addiction and 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 with my you know becoming a person, but you know, this game means more to me than just a video game, right? It's a way right. of life. It's a lifestyle. It is, you know, how I make a living. I'm a streamer as well. And, you know, and, and I can't believe that I'm actually able to sit here and speak with you and, and able to tell you, just say, you know, thank you for what you did. I mean, you created these classes and these and parts of this game that I have fallen in love with and has helped me find out more about myself as a person. That's a gift that I couldn't imagine, you know, uh, being able to give someone else. So I, from the deepest part of my heart, man, 100%, thank you so much. Seriously. Yeah, I have to respond to that. I, I, obviously, I appreciate it a tremendous amount, but um, it's, it, 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 you, you asked about a copy of that email that I sent, you know, <laughs> to Alan Adham about PVP, right? So he, here's the part that is relevant to your situation that, that and it's why it's so touching to me for the, that you've shared that part of your, you know, your experience with WoW is because in the quote that I, I threw out in from Fight Club that I threw out in that document was um, how, how much can you know about yourself? If you've never been in a fight, right? Mm -hmm. And it was it was trying to support this idea that PvP should be part of the game, right? Um, but I went on to also express in this document um, that um, when you, you know, just the concept that when you're in a fight, you learn about yourself, right? And learning about yourself leads to personal growth. And personal growth is one of the most addicting things that people can ever experience, right? If you've ever felt, right, that sense of personal growth, um, it's 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 there's so much elation right you're like oh my gosh how do i get more of that right like yeah. when you notice yourself growing as a person right and so um and and i i spoke about how that should be the goal one of the goals of our game i know because i even wrote i know it's an it's entertainment but uh first but the idea that it could also teach people about themselves and help them grow personally right mm -hmm. uh, that's where we have them, you know, that's where we have them in terms of like, they are going to love this product because through socialization and through a lot of other things going on in the game, right. Um, they're going to grow as human beings. Right. And that's, that's going to be more valuable than any set of gear or any boss kill you know, or whatever it is. Right. It's that secondary effect of, we got through this personally, we got through this as a group we got through this as a guild, you know, whatever it is. Right. Um, and so it's very gratifying for me to hear basically the end result of that, you know, thing that I postulated so many years ago. And like, cause you're the exact example of what I was talking about. Right. And so right. thank you very much for <laughs> bringing this full circle. Right. Oh man. Um, and I know you don't speak just for yourself. I know there's a lot of people right. that are out there in the same way. So, um, but it's it's very gratifying to hear. So thank you. I mean so much to hear that, Kevin. Thank you so much. Really. I'm just going to ask you a question, Kevin. So if this didn't work out, mm -hmm. game design, what was your other... Did you have any other passions in, in, in oh, life? It's, it's so funny. Well, first I wanted to be a professional soccer player. Um, <laughs> oh. <in our> <laughs> um, I was actually a bartender for six years before I became a game designer. Or before I went to work for Blizzard, um, I was a bartender and I ended that one of my gigs and Pat Nagel, who was my roommate and has been my friend since um, sixth grade, um, said, why don't you come work for Blizzard? You know enough about computers, you can work tech support, right? <laughs> and so I got a job working tech support. And then a, a year or so after that, I got a chance to be on the WoW team and I took it. And I didn't even realize I could make a career as a game designer, right? And I think to this day, a lot of people don't think that. Um, and sadly, the industry isn't looking for pure game designers very much anymore. But um, I always assumed I'd have to be able to program or be an artist or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and so, 
you know, thanks to me being unemployed at the time, thanks to Pat Nagel for the suggestion, I ended up in a place where it's like my career path became sort of accidentally awesome, right? (laughs) And I was able to make a career out of it. So I very much kind of stumbled into it. Um, And yeah, it's been been an amazing ride. I've been so fortunate. Well, we're glad you stumbled into it and we're we're glad for, uh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, Get so maybe I'll go back to bartending. You never know. Uh, <laughs> there you go. I don't know if you guys are big drinkers or not. But. Yeah. Maybe you can totally Jordan change now. the meadow on drinking, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, if you make a drink called the Staff of Jordan, there you go. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. round's not me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> nice. <sighs> Cargos, Cargos, what do you got? Yo, so Kevin, we love your game, man, and we're trying to like kind of defend it to a certain extent because it's not all on Blizzard too. At the same time, like the community, if the community is kind of toxic or mean spirited or whatever, like mm-hmm. they're just not, they're just not going to be happy or whatever. So like you know, recently with right. the hardcore game, the game mode, it's just everything has felt so right. You know, and interpreting this creation of yours, yeah. you know, through the lens of this hardcore lens uh, has really just made so much sense across every aspect. And you know, I've, I've been an entrepreneur yeah, my whole well. life. Ninety-five percent mm-hmm. of ideas end up in disaster, but this is one of the few right. types of things where everything. It just feels good. It's fun to watch, fun to play. Um, and, you know, we, we, I, I was hoping maybe, you know, one day you would give it a shot maybe because um, it would just be so interesting to see like, right. what, what the creator of this universe, how, how, like their thoughts on it as if, if, if they're trying right. to play through that uh, game mode. I so. love survival games, so it does sound very close to what I would want. Um, it, it's so funny. I'll tell you another quick story about hardcore modes or, you know, one life modes. As a as a customer service person, I was I was a tech support and I was doing tech support for Diablo two, which had a hardcore. Um, and I got invited to a meeting um, on whether or not hardcore mode more move, sorry hardcore mode was something that we should do in a game. Mm. Uh, and it, it was back and forth, right? Like they, they were still trying to decide whether or not it was a good thing, and. I argued against it, believe it or not, um, because I said every every experience ends in horror, right? And then they then they're on the phone and they're calling me and they're yelling at me because there was some bug or lag or whatever it was. It's rarely because you screwed up, right? Especially in your own mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I argued against it because I was like, "Why would you want a gaming experience to always end badly, right?" And I've never been so wrong, right? And I didn't realize it at the time, but what what it did was it makes every experience up to that point way more amazing, right? So even though it probably ends horribly, <laughs> every experience is a lot weightier and a lot more powerful uh, because of that, you know, fear, because of that tension, you know? And so um, I still think it was correct not to have the mode at least in the way you're thinking, probably, uh, in WoW, uh, because WoW is, there's so much permanence, you know, to WoW. Like, Def Cam was talking about not wanting to play on private servers because he doesn't want his character to be wiped, you know? Like, mm. there's a lot of that, you know, in WoW, and it makes, it makes, um, uh, it makes the loftier, you know, goals, um, what's the right word? Uh, it means you can have loftier goals and you can implement right. more challenge because the downside for me from hardcore is um, I'm going to play safe the whole time. Right. That's mm-hmm. my worry. Cause when I play, wow, I play crazy. Like I'll just yeah. do things, you know, and, and try to push my challenge level all the time because the last thing I want to do is get complacent in a game where I feel like, yeah, I'm just pushing buttons and everything's dying. Right. So um, my worry is always that people don't, they don't push themselves. They, Mm-hmm. waiting to do a dungeon until they're way over geared or way over leveled for it or you know because they don't want any chance of dying so um but uh yeah I, it does sound really intriguing but it's one of those things i have to manage like how safe i play you know <laughs> yeah. and try to still push myself so I'm, try to find the right way to push myself um you know so i'm still having a great time and there's still that fear in my belly you know yeah Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. I mean, we're not, any one of us here are not exactly big streamers or anything. So, it, you know, you coming on this podcast too, it's like you're getting in the trenches with the community and, and just, you know, being right. 100% transparent and, and real. You guys are huge in my heart, let me tell you. <laughs> 
yeah, as you are the feeling is mutual, man. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. So much. Yeah. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for your time, guys. If you like anything that any of us do, please, as a personal favor to all of us, could you please, uh, you know, follow him on Twitch and YouTube and give some in. Yeah. Some let's, uh, let's, let's post them again. Um, his Twitch and YouTube. Yeah. And what are your um, what, are, what are your plans moving forward, Kevin, with your Twitch channel and YouTube channel? Are you kind of just going with the flow, or do you have any kind of shows on there or um, things like that for? The uh, yeah, so mostly I just play games, and then we talk about a lot of game design. Um, no, no day goes by where I don't get WoW questions. Um, but uh, yeah, we just kind of hang out. It's super chill. I play games that I enjoy, um, and then yeah, we talk about the game design and why I think things work and don't so a lot of what we've been talking about here um just kind of day to day yeah but uh, i love all kinds of different games always have so i have trouble uh especially lately getting into a rut where i play just one thing so uh you'll see me play a wide variety um and a lot of people love that you're just kind of a one game person right so unfortunately that's not me um but yeah lately i've been playing uh, Final Fantasy 14, but before that I was playing Tar- Escape from Tarkov like crazy. Um, I played Crusader Kings 3 the other night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Prison Architect, you know, like, we have some fun, so. And I try to include my viewers anytime I play games that allow for it, so. But, uh, yeah, awesome. just chilling. I'll be playing Shadowlands when it comes out, you know. All cool. my fingers and okay. toes crossed, but, yeah. you know, yeah. not expecting much, but we'll see. We'll see um, exactly, and then uh, yeah, then TBC, and then I'll, I'll uh, I do intend to level an alliance character to max at some point, and potentially it'd be a hardcore character. And oh you guys my know, god! So please, I love dude. to see that. <laughs> that I'll have to think about it. So. That would be the ultimate. You love to see it. Everybody's gonna like host <laughs> you and go crazy, man. And we get to see the original <laughs> architect of the game yeah. play just right. a playthrough to sixty on hardcore. God. All right, oh, yeah. oh, to, to sixty. Oh, you have a lot of faith in. Oh me. yeah, you got to see this. Oh man, die at level three, frost main hole. Look out! <laughs> stay um, out of the cave. That's a, you know, just stay out right. of the cave. Yeah. That's where you find all your friends. They're in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning oh, in. We're gonna end the stream now. Yeah. I'm gonna pass you off to Grace for days. He's off to some hardcore. Um, I'm going to be playing hardcore later today. I'm not sure if Def Camp uh, and all of them are, but I'm not, uh, I'm not. I'm taking today off after this. I need to break. Yeah, I need to take all this in yeah <laughs> same here but uh thank you yeah, so much for your time ladies and gentlemen one more round of applause please for kevin please follow him please support support i mean he's, he's nice. done so thank much you so much guys work. i really appreciate it thank you it's been an absolute an honor. honor it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure all right take care everyone i'm gonna pass you off the grace